shifting in the night Stalking you Does my face seem familiar? Does my back feel you more? Well, I change you or will it end you? And the power that I have Can give you eternal life Death doesn't know me I've become eternal When the hunger wakes me I live to feed With the darkness Surrounds me Where the mist she follows me I walk alone in the night Watching you Following you Leading on you Through the night When the hunger wakes me I live to feed With the darkness surrounds me all your life I was still I become the living dead I own the darkness and no heart beats inside of me I become eternal When the hunger wakes me I live to feed With the darkness Surrounds me Release. 
reading the uh, the chat here. Jared says, "Amazing, Josh be like the end?" Question mark. Two weeks ago, and in the time since, has kept up a pace of the most live streams I've ever seen. Now it hasn't been the most live streams. We did take the weekend off. Last weekend, uh, if you noticed, Jared, we took the weekend off. We didn't actually do anything. But um, so we missed a weekend. But you know, oh well. I did a couple of uh, impromptu lives um, during the week, just kind of you know, just doing my own thing on my own schedule. Um, you know, that's it. Just kind of doing that when you have uh, the time. You know. Yeah. Well, I just felt like, and it was weird because I know I was on during the day, which is, which is weird if you, if you're used to like being at night. So it was weird. I did one, or was it like two? I did two morning ones, right? Yeah. I did like two morning ones. And then I did one that was like at two in the morning at night, like yeah. late, late at night. So you got all the night owls. And so then I got accused of, of flexing on the community. So stupid. That's a, that's a, that's a dumb make you say like, like first off. He, he, he did those live streams in the morning because he couldn't sleep, which is, wow. you know, we're night owls, so we sleep during the morning. So that's why I did it. But even if he did it to flex, so what? What are you going to do about it? You you can't get 400 people in the chat at 6 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock uh, on a Monday morning. You can't do that, and you're mad. So just be quiet. All right, let, let, sit, sit sit down back at the kitty table and let the big boy here um, uh, talk to the adults, okay? The adults are talking. You sit at the kitty table where you belong because no one wants to watch or hear you. Just sit down, all right? I'm, I'm going to give you over to the big boy now. Here we go. <laughs> I'm the big boy. I mean, it's so stupid. He's just flexing. So what? Do something about it. Yeah, look. Tap out or black out. How about that? Uh... So, anyways, point is, people are going to complain no matter what we do, regardless of what we do. We're PRT, and apparently we were born of controversy, and we will always be controversial. Doesn't have to be that way. You could very simply just leave us the hell alone. Um, in fact, that would just make it all go away. Be the end of it. So, anyway, enough of that. We got a great show planned. I'm going to tell you right now, dude, this is going to make the haters hate us even more. It's going to make the lovers love us even more. Um, did that make sense? I don't even know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're going to get some people in this chat and get it get it popping here, dude. Uh, got my notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So I talked on Friday night um, with uh, Monica Rollins. She's my female co-host on Friday. And then I got uh, my man, Abe and Joe. Uh, those are my dogs. They come on and we talk and we, we just, you know, we, we, we retell encounters and we talk about all kinds of stuff. And each one brings another element to the show. So we weren't... Uh, uh, doing a whole lot we were at the beginning of the show we were just talking me and monica but next week next friday be sure and tune in because she's going to bring some reports from the brown springs and lake texoma area and those are hotbeds for bigfoot and dogman in fact um twice now tony you were with me when we talked to a uh, tribal officer that told us some weird wild stuff mm -hmm. about, the chalk talk yeah the chalk uh, and uh, so we decided to go out there one night, me and my brother, uh, back in 2016. And uh, Anthony, you were there, and we drove through there, and that, that whole area is creepy as hell. I was like, it's really dark out here. So we turned the lights off, and I decided to get out of the vehicle right there by the bridge. And I was like, I can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to have a flashlight because it is really dark. And then there's like this – there's a couple different uh, – places that people call Dogman Island, but one of them is right there. Um, so there's like three different versions of Dogman Island. One of them supposedly is in uh, Louisiana, which I think was the creation or something of someone's mind, because uh, I found no proof of that anywhere. Uh, and in fact, one of the guys whose grandfather bought land, who we interviewed a couple, a couple times, we've interviewed him, um, he bought land adjacent to the Hernandez Ranch, which is not even called that. That's not the real name. But um, 
he figured it out because he was living there. And so he started messaging us and I thought it was odd. He was like, he goes, Hey man, I've listened to your show and my grandfather bought property. Um, and so we went to go eat dinner with this guy. This guy was telling us all this dog man activity he was having on there. And he was more like asking questions from us. You know, he's like, look, I listened to the show. And when my grandfather bought that land, he's like, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to tell him, you know, because his grandfather didn't believe, you know, in all this. And then his grandfather said, I saw a weird looking wolf walking on its hind legs uh, at like midnight walking across the road. He told us and Armando uh, at dinner. And so over the course of, a, of several months with him and then eventually with uh, another neighbor who came forward and uh, his name's Philip. And he started telling us some weird stuff. And then and then we met a guy that lived about th three miles from there. And get this. He used to work at a vape shop that my brother would go to. You know who I'm talking. I don't know if you know him, Tony, but you know him, Anthony. Yeah. And uh, he t his name is Carl. And he told us an alien abduction encounter he had. Oh, yeah, okay, you remember. And at that same time, I did not realize it, but... My friend, who I'd known for years, David, he's from Del Valley, was was kneeled down looking at the at the mods. That's what they're called, those vapey things, whatever. And I heard this voice, and I thought, that guy's voice sounds familiar. And then he stands up, and David's a big, tall, muscular dude. And he's like, he goes, oh, my gosh, as I live and breathe, Josh Turner, wolf. <laughs> he's like, I thought I heard that booming voice. Um, so I have a history with him. I got into a physical altercation at, at the gym one time that he worked at. It wasn't my fault. The guy pushed my friend over a weight bench, and I proceeded to um, deal with him. Uh, and then the guy gets gets in trouble. The police come. He's got steroids all inside of his car, and I'm there for like an hour and a half answering questions of how I knew the guy. I knew him from downtown, and there was a big old altercation, and um, he tried to shoot us. That is a true story that happened to me, my friend Bernard, and and Scorpio. And David was there along with my other friend Marcus. And uh, Marcus and Bernard uh, are, were, were really good friends. And I actually met uh, Bernard through him. Uh, they're African-American dudes and lived on the east side. So they were just like used to, used to gunfire but didn't think it was going to happen at the gym. <laughs> They were just like, dude, you know, we hear it in our neighborhood, but here we are at the gym on a nicer side of town, and this guy flips out and pulls out a gun. Uh, his his whole thing was, I'm a New York Recon, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And he attacked Scorpio, and he towers over him. He's a six-foot-six uh, beast and uh, was really roided up. Now, years later, I run into that to that guy's sister, and she – said that he did receive, because he had a cerebral hematoma from that, but that he did receive a sentence. He did carry, he, he carried it out, whatever. He got reformed, and now he's preaching for a place called Outreach, which is amazing because I did not know this. So that's really cool. That person reached out to me uh, recently and said that um, his life changed. And apparently, get this. He listens to my show now. <laughs> so shout out to her. This is a different Monica. This is Monica and me saying hi. And Charm, that's his nickname. I'm glad that you got reformed. Sorry that we had to have that altercation. I found out that you do listen to the show, and I, I welcome you. Um, and I, I'm glad that, the, that you're doing uh, drug rehabilitation for people. Um, now, he himself did not do drugs. Um, he, by his own admission, he says it in his, when he does his, uh, whatever that he was on steroids and that he, he, had everything, you know, um, is true. It's what happened, but, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing story. And now here's another thing. When he was in prison, the first two years he was in prison because he was in trouble, he was already on probation for something else, but you got to understand something. I've never taken steroids, but I have several friends who have. And I've been around the weightlifting scene my whole life since I was like 15, 16. And a lot of guys juice. And a normal guy will be just a normal guy. And then they, they, they just flip out because a piece of paper falls on the ground. And they're like, ah, oh, you know. And so 
what, what this guy's problem was, there was something that happened between us downtown. It was sort of a, um, I don't know how you would call it, pinky, pinky blinders type thing mm -hmm. <laughs> between us. And yeah. uh, he didn't like me and I didn't like him. And he had assaulted a couple of my, my friends and he was pushing me into an altercation. There's Scorpio. Scorpio was there. And so anyway, David was there the, the day, and then he started talking about that incident. My wife was with me, and um, he just, we didn't get into real detail, but he was like, yeah, I remember that situation because he was not on duty that night working, but he was there working out. And we were all just talking and having a good time, and then Charm sees me, tries to fight me. I told him, I don't want to fight you. I had just finished working out, and I was just you know tore up just finished doing a tire upper body workout he was fresh so yeah i mean he was ready to rock and roll and i'm like i'm not gonna fight you man i'll catch you on another day or something you know, i was trying to get out of it honestly and um he's like well if you won't fight me maybe he will and he got in scorpio's face and shoved him over a weight bench and then the rest is history but as fate would have it he was in prison and I'm going to give you a story that he gave me recently that he emailed to me. This is something, that, and, and his sister, thank you, Monica, for helping him. She never gave up on him. She used to go and visit him. She gave him a Bible. He threw it away. She went back, gave him another Bible. And this time his cellmate began to read it. And then he invited him to the, 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 the church. They have like a little church there at the prison. And uh, he started going, and the next thing you know, he's preaching. So he did eight years in prison, and it was not just for trying to shoot me. And I forgive you. I forgive you. If I can forgive somebody for trying to shoot me, uh, I think people can forgive for some little mean words, okay? Uh, people not liking people for mean words is probably why the economy's in the toilet. I shouldn't have said that. But the bottom line is the truth. People are like, you know, whatever. I we could go on and on about how things should have, would have, could have been, but uh, it is what it is. So I get this story from this guy, Carl, who says, you know, I was abducted and he was actually pulled out of his house. And he lives approximately 2.8 miles at that time when he was living there from Hernandez Ranch. Hmm. And then I get another story. From a, a, a lady named Eliza who says that I used to live there with my husband. And we had missing time on Ranch Road 12 right there by the turnoff to go to where Hernandez Ranch would be. It would be like you go back up in there and then there's a few more roads or whatever. But she said it was on Devil's Backbone. So weird, wild stuff. It's all connected. Everything is connected. And then I'm going to bring a guy on. Um, either next week, probably beginning of May, I'm going to have several different guests who are going to be coming on and talking about various things. Last night we had Max Hawthorne on. Um, he would have had more time had we had him on last Saturday like we were supposed to. But instead, we uh, had to get him on last night and he barely had any time. Um, but he did show a picture of what was uh, an x-ray looking photo of a reptilian i mean i don't know what it was i mean yeah. it was a reptilian or something but go check last night's show out if you want to see a picture of a reptilian i normally don't do that now if someone wants to come on the show and bring a picture and you know and he kind of sprung that on me um uh but i i don't it, it, it it's, i didn't it wasn't like he offended me with it at all i just looked at it and it was, it was my choice whether to put it up or not <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Excuse me. I said thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for the membership. Somebody bought a membership. I think that was spilling tea on Spunky Sparky. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. But I appreciate it. Uh, for anybody who buys a membership or does anything, don't forget, we have the Patreon down here. You can join 10 20 30 40 $50 tier. I think there's a few people who are ready to get their swag bags. Um, people were messaging me all week saying, hey, I want swag. And then one of them tried to trick me. Mm-hmm. And I said, dude, you're not even a Patreon member. <laughs> He's like, well, I've been a listener for a long time. And I said, I wouldn't be fair to the Patreon members if I did that. Yeah. And we do have to have the Patreon. And uh, like I said, donations are not expected, but they are greatly appreciated because it keeps our show free and it keeps everything uh, from having to be put behind a paywall. 
Because the last thing you want is somebody to, you know, you tell half a story and then you have to go to a paywall. Um, there's only like one or two people that do that in this, in this field that I actually respect. The rest to me are grifters. I'll be real honest. Um, it's just the truth. You know, I mean, I don't want to do that. I don't ever want to have to do that. So that's why if you're interested, put the, uh, the, uh, PayPal up there and you don't want to donate to the live chat, the chat, whatever it's called, the whatever, just do it through the PayPal. So that, that works just as well, if not better, because we don't have to split it with, uh, whatever. But anyway, that, that's your options to do that. Um, what else we got going on here? Uh, so anyway, uh, so out of something bad, something was, something good was born, which is this person becoming saved. Uh, and having talked to him a little bit, which was weird. It was really weird to talk to somebody who I just thought to this day, he probably hated my guts, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, and he says, oh man, he goes, I forgave you a long time ago. And I'm like, you forgave me. You forgave me for what? <laughs> and he goes, you gave me cerebral hemorrhage. I was like, oh, that's right. I did. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and then that's not a flex. I mean, you, you forgave yourself. For He's like, dude, there's, th th when you talk to him, there's no like anger in his heart. You can feel the energy from the guy, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. It's really incredible. And he was a hell of a fighter back in the day. Um, he did have seizures and have some issues for mm -hmm. a while. Uh, part of which, because he pulled out of the parking lot after he did what he did and he ran into a police car as they were approaching. So he, um, yeah. So that just made things worse. He was rushed to the hospital. He nearly died. Um, so yeah, uh, rough when you talk, and when you talk to somebody after you have, you know, you haven't spoken to in years and you thought, you know, this person probably hates my guts. They were languishing in prison, but I didn't, put him in prison. I mean, it was, you know, and, I, and he knows that, you know, but he said, you know, the first few months he was there, he, all he could think about was me and, you know, and, and to a lesser degree, my friends. And I just was like, dude, we didn't do that to you though. You did it to yourself. And he goes, Oh, I know. I totally, he's like the first thing he had to do was accept that he was there and he was stuck. And then he had to accept his role which is the neck, and then finally you go through all the, the spectrum of emotions and, you know, I mean, it's acceptance. You stop being angry and start being responsible. And uh, he's been listening to my show for over a year. He's been wa binge watched uh, most of the live stream and most of the, um, the podcast, thanks to his sister and her boyfriend. Shout out to him. Uh, but they, they, um, definitely uh, helped change his life. They never gave up on him. And her boyfriend is the one that got her saved. And he's a former Latin King. He was a gangster, gangbanger, did all kinds of crap. And, um, I don't know him, but I knew some of the people from his set from years ago when I used to coach and they were no, uh, they were no punks. They were pretty rough trade. And they really, I never had problems with that, that set. I never had any kind of dealings with them much, much at all. I knew who they were and they didn't really mess with me. I didn't really mess with them. They had their own thing or whatever, but, uh, he did work overtime to try to help get this man, uh, become saved. And so to that, I think that's a great thing. I think that's awesome. So what we have tonight, though, uh, we're going to talk about when we get some people in here, we have a story that we began to talk about when I was talking to Monica Rollins, who is the co-host on Friday night um, before uh, Breezy and, and Abe uh, jumped in uh, and joined. the. Abe came at the very end. I guess he didn't realize that there was a, a link there. And it goes back to why we need a computer, because that computer at the house is just not going to cut it. You can see that the sound is not uh, real good. And then we're trying to, you know, we can't even send a link now. We're like trying to send a link out. And it wouldn't even let me do that. The computer is just all does whatever the hell it wants to do. That says, Missy Bass says, make sure you're still subscribed. I was unsubscribed once again this morning. Yes. That is a big problem too. Um, it's a problem that I talked with Barton about on his channel. 
uh, Tex and BMR, all of us have had issues with people being unsubscribed. Like people will be subscribed, they'll come and they'll be unsubscribed. I don't know why that is, why that's happening. Um, but we are going to start moving Saturday's show to Rumble. And you're not going to want to miss it because we're going to do that in May. We're going to shoot for mid-May. So every uh, Saturday, we're just going to kind of let you know to re to re um, reconfirm that we are moving to Rumble for Saturday. And I, and contrary to what one moron, uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're running away from uh, uh, YouTube. They're going to Rumble to run away, uh, you know, because God's after them, uh, you know. Uh, and then God, I mean like the baby Jesus. Um, so yeah, no, that's not the case. Uh, Perry, the cable guy. No. Yeah. Let's run away from 35,000 subscribers yeah. to, to go to, to go to rumble. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because not running we're, away. We're going to rumble in addition to YouTube. Yeah. Because we're, we're five because we're smart and we're awesome and we're better than you. Yeah. We're terrible. We're terrible at what we do. So we got some people in here now. If you don't mind. I gotta get a lozenge for my throat. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. I know I get complaints and people say, I can't get smacking on something and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that Double actually decimal. sounded like my boss from Foodland. <laughs> he was a Korean War veteran. Especially how old I was. I was like 16. I was like, I'm ancient, you know? mm -hmm. And this dude's like, he'd talk. <laughs> I'll never forget watching Lord of the Rings and that that pale orc on the, and he's like, "Stay where you are." Yeah, <laughs> that was him right there. Uh -huh. And he would drive in from Lockhart to just to work that as a night shift. And he was retiree, mm -hmm. and he even told me he was like, on his lunch break. Um, and there's a there's an episode I did called the Ghosts of Foodland. Like it was one of the early episodes where there was a bunch of weird stuff that happened. I never saw anything. I didn't have anything happen to me. Um, but I remember he would, on his lunch break, he would go and he would get like a can of salmon or a can of tuna and he would just eat it out of the can. That was his lunch. Yeah. And, uh, he, and if you disturbed him, if you walked to the back, even to get a mop and he was back there, he'd be like, ah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Dude, what's wrong with this guy? Then you say you had, you had a friend who was like, whose grandpa or something was in World War II. The Korean War and Vietnam, mm -hmm. and like his mind was just so far gone. Yeah, when he was a young, young guy, he was in, in, in uh, he was he fought the Japanese, um, and that was my friend Chad. Mm. Yeah, and that his dad had him when he was like sixty nine years old. Oh, yeah, he was like I didn't know I could still make children. <laughs> and then he was, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, he was fifty. He was fifty nine years old when he had him. Um, and he was like in his eighties or it was like, and he, but he still had all his faculties. Like he was, you know, yeah. so he was a really young guy. He was in world war two. And then he, and he was in, he was, I saw his, uh, DD two fourteen, like his discharge, all that stuff. Uh, we were, we were snooping through his stuff one day and he had all the, he had medals. <laughs> uh, shout out to Mr. McGregor. He was uh, an amazing guy. I mean, I would hope so fighting in that many battles. I mean, it was crazy. He was in he was in uh, in the army for thirty two years, and uh, in that time, he fought in three different wars. Unbelievable. Um, now he was a pretty amazing guy. He's one of the people that got me into security. Him and your grandma, mm -hmm. and they were both like, "You're lazy, get a job." No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I was never lazy. I, I already had a job, but they were they told me, "You want a better job? Go get a security job." I mean, you know. And if you want to make a career out of it, you can always do what I did and build a company. But it was, uh, he was an incredible guy. And he was so cantankerous. He was always cool with me, but he hated all of Chad's other friends and he mm -hmm. hated Chad. Like he's like, my son plays video games and does nothing. Take him <laughs> to the gym. He's super skinny. And I'm like, you're super skinny. He's genetically going to be skinny. Mm -hmm. He's weak. I will say that though he could his dad was strong for a skinny old guy. Yeah, got that old man strength. He was man, some veteran strength. Yeah, it'd be funny though because like he would answer the door in just his underwear <laughs> and did not care. Tidy whities did not care that you. I mean, he, I, I mean, I would imagine because he he wouldn't want you there in the first place. Yeah, oh, well, I was gonna so say he like, divide three. Why wars. not answer the door in your underwears? 
Probably with like a little magnum or something. He was, what do you want? was the only one. He, he never answered the door in a gun with a gun or anything. But yeah. like he had one sitting on the coffee table a couple times. He was, you know, uh, he was the first one that showed me how to clean one, how to like, you know, mess with one. But sometimes he would just be sitting there in his underwear and he would not bother to go and change either. He didn't care. Yeah. And he, I was one of the only ones that he would let come in the house. My uh, my other friends or whatever, he was, if they came inside, he would be snarky with them and rude. <clears throat> Yeah. And they were just like, man, that guy's mean. He's a mean old guy. And one of my friends, he was black, and uh, his name was Jason. He was one of the people that I saw that uh, black dog, the black dogs, so that group of black dogs, whatever. Um, and he was like, he's racist. And I'm like, I don't think so. Because he doesn't like any of Chad's white friends either. He just doesn't like people, period. Like, I mean, he's actually was nicer to Jason than he was a couple of the other people. There was one kid, he couldn't stand him. <laughs> And he called him a little hooligan or whatever, or hoodlum. <laughs> and that kid was, like, not even really nearly as bad as we were. <laughs> I think he just the way he looked or something. Or because yeah. he had both of his ears pierced, maybe. He thought, you know, he was like, Ernie's a, that, that kid's a turd. But he was, like, actually a pretty good student. And, you know, now he's, like, got an insurance agency or whatever. He's living up in, like, Nebraska or something. But, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um when you when you look at these people that have that kind of mentality, uh, you you kind of think like what made them the way they are. Yeah. You know, like my my boss over at Foodland. Now he wasn't racist because Michael, the guy that trained me, was a dark his, uh, skinned Hispanic guy. He looked kind of like you, Anthony, your skin tone, whatever. Mm -hmm. Real cool dude. Um, and so he liked Michael. But he couldn't stand me. Like, he couldn't stand me at all. And he he loved my mom. That's how we got the job. You know, my mom was like, "Hey, you want a job?" And those guys got a job. Um, but that place was haunted, and there was some weird stuff that happened there. Like I, I told the story on the show one time. People may not remember that far back, but somebody went in. They had that frozen food. Like uh, they don't have them now. I don't ever see them. But they were like those big long frozen food deals that are just open mm -hmm. yeah they have them they have them at like heb over there in the the, the lunch meat section oh yeah yeah you mean yeah. like the you could just grab it off the top and they're yeah. just like a long trough looking thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well somebody had went in to grab something and something grabbed them a hand grabbed this woman and pulled her into it this was at foodland at foodland okay and then somebody was re reaching for like a pizza or tv dinner or something this is stories i was told yeah. and something grabbed somebody there like in the frozen food section there was always something going on there. That's weird. Huh. I just saw a shadow in the corner of my eye right now. I was talking about. Mm. Yeah, we had to think like what two, two episodes about uh, Foodland called Ghosts of Foodland. No, it was like, just one. Oh, it was just one. Okay, yeah, but it, it was like one of our earliest episodes. Yeah, so. it was like near misses for me. Yeah. Like people around me were having experiences, and I wasn't experiencing it. Like the Bigfoot thing. Mm -hmm. A bunch of kids saw it. I didn't see it because I was too busy trying to prank them with two older kids that basically just recruited me. <laughs> and they're like, you're going to help us scare all the other little kids. And I'm like, I really don't want to. Okay, all right. I, I feel <laughs> like helping. I'm going to help. Let's do this because they'll beat the crap out of me. And Lance yeah. was a pretty big kid like at that time. It's funny now. He's like a, he's a missionary. That kid used to bully the hell out of us. <laughs> and in fact, my first year of Pony Colt League, he was like, it was his last year. And it was like, where, I, where I'm from, where we're from, yeah. you play three years. It's like Pony Colt, Babe Ruth, but it's pretty, pretty much, you, it's all the same. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, he beamed me so hard in my, my shoulder. Like, he caught me, and I went like that because I thought it was going to hit my my helmet. and But I moved like this, so it got the top of my shoulder, and it hurt so bad. And I threw my bat down, and he's all like, like, wanting me to, like, charge the mound and make something out of it. And I'm like, man, I ain't going and trying to charge a mound and psychopath, you know? Like, I'm taking my base, you know? And then he gets the ball. He's over there staring at me at first base. Like, like he wanted me to do something. <laughs> and I go look on Facebook, and he's like a, a, a missionary. Like, he's like he's like going and helping people. And and um, so he's totally different than we were yeah. when we were young, man. He's, he's totally different. It's funny guy. how, like, some of those people, like, like some of the worst kids in their youth, They'll be like just rowdy, mean, just nasty kids, and then they'll grow up and be like, like, like really self-mastered 
people, like mm -hmm. really at peace, nice people. Yeah, so you can't but then, be like, mad some at of those them. kids, they were like goody yeah. two shoes. You know, they, 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 they never got in trouble. They grow up and, and they're like psychopaths. Well, that oh. makes sense to me. It's kind of like the, the, no the, one of those. The, the, those Jack London books, uh, Call of the Wild, and then uh, what was the other one, White Fang, but what they were like opposite. Jack London books. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it just reminds me of those two books. Like the, the, the themes uh, of those two books apply to human beings. It's like, true. It is true. You know, like, look, like, like, okay, well, you know the story of the dude Black Magic. Mm -hmm. We called him Black Magic. Yeah. Back then, his name was Mike, and we called him Magic Mike. But this is years before. <laughs> yeah, before the movie. The movie. <laughs> before the um, connotation. But, but he's a black dude, and we called him Black Magic. Well, me and him fought three, like three times, um, and he just couldn't, he just didn't want to give up. And he just kept trying. And so, but years later, like he pulled into a parking garage I was doing security at, and I saw him. I was like, uh oh. And he had a big cross on. He was dressed real nice. And I was at the St. David's parking garage. And he told me, this is my, my fiance. And she's like, hello. She's a very beautiful woman. Um, they just looked like, like very nice. He was doing well. And he had gotten saved and didn't drink anymore, was not doing the things he was doing. It was a completely different person. And then even told her that he credited me with helping to change his life because he finally figured out he wasn't going to be the baddest man on the planet. And this isn't a braggart thing on my part because who would do that? I'm not, that's, who does that? What I'm talking about is like literally the Holy Spirit changing people's lives. So it happened for a reason. The third time I was just like, what is this guy, suicidal? Yeah. Like he came up and just tried to cold cock me while I was standing right in front of the club. He came up, said a couple things I could like unintelligible and I'm like looking at him like, what? And then he just swung and I was like, whoa. And then we just started right there. And so when, you know, four or five years go by, guys, well, it was more than that. It was probably 2000, let's see. Uh, from that point, it was about six years later. Um, he came up and it was, he was a different guy. Yeah. And when he left, he was just like, he gave me a card to go to his church, you know, I threw it in the trash. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go to your church. You know, I'm just not. Nah. I had my own, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah. And then I saw him one day at the HEB, and he was in line, and he was, like, maybe a year later, and he he wasn't faking the funk. He was just like, hey, brother, and he, like, gave me a hug, and he's, like, holding bread and stuff, and <laughs> he's like, yeah, I got, a, I got a kid now, and I don't know. Same thing with another guy my brother used to work with. They were demons, man. I mean, like, I got in a fight with him, and I beat him up under the bar, and he was, even after he got up, I didn't knock him out, so he was still on his feet. So he was grabbing, like, bottles and throwing them at me, dude. And D had to come behind him and, and grab him and choke him. And uh, his name was Jamal. And shout out to you if you listen to the show. I don't think you do. But um, he was a promoter, a, a rap promoter guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave my bro years later, he gave my brother a job, and he was well-grounded. you know. Or like Rick. Rick does listen to the show, like Rick Hernandez. Yeah. He's another one. He used to be like rowdy. Like I remember him beating this guy half to death in the bathroom over there at, at Inferno. And now he's like, hey, man, you know, and he's like, I got my, my construction yeah. company. You know, and you're just like, damn, it's the same people. <laughs> but some of these people, they did not pan out. And they did go to prison and like 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 Big Mike. Like he'll be in there for the rest of his life. Um, went in there and caught a case on the inside because he didn't know how to act. But that's. That's life. You have to pray for people and hope that they change. And people can, and they God works miracles in people's lives. Oh yeah. And I think some of these people, and I believe this, that some of these people go through this spiritual, you know, destitution, and then there's like this 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 depression that descends on them, and then they eventually just give in to the power of the Holy Spirit, and then they confess with their mouth, I, I you know, you are Lord, you know, and then they it just takes over and then they accept christ and they become different people yeah i think god puts god does put pain in your life for uh that's that's there for a reason and it's a very it's a productive form of suffering it's like suffering for a reason that you have to get through but it's it's when people become resentful of that of that pain and they like they reject it and rebel against it i think is, is when like is when those people they just don't pan out because that they they, they, won't, they don't they don't accept like, I, I have to go through this, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I have to accept it and just keep your head down and yeah. work, you know. And on that note, you have something? No, I just clear my throat. No, I'm just sitting there like I always doing nothing. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I see. Look, look at him. Look at him. Look at the mean look. Now he turns away. He was staring very hard at me. He always looks like that. Very, very, very mean, very Richard Ramirez type look. He oh, he's got the hair. Like the, the, the Oh, my friend uh, Eric. The not brushing, just kind of run your fingers through it. and. We're going to get started here, here, folks. But I got to say this before we do this. Sex appeal, my bad. Sure. Konevsky, uh, Russian gangster. Mm -hmm. he, he's going to the... He's going to the gym and shaving people's heads for two hundred dollars. Oh, wow! Because he, he, he said these kids they have the broccoli hair. Mm -hmm. You got to look at the video. He says, oh, "Why wow. would you want to look like a broccoli?" And so he gives them two hundred dollars and he shaves their head in the gym. And that one one of these guys, and Eric's a big guy, you know. Uh, and this dude comes up and he says, "You can't be doing that in here." And he's like, "Why not?" <laughs> and then the guy tells him, "He says you need to stop that." He goes, "Make me." He just keeps doing it. He goes, <laughs> he goes, who are you? He goes, you need to leave. He goes, well, I'm not. And he just keeps doing it. <laughs> like, Eric does not care. He just does not give a – it was so funny. I was laughing. He goes, there you go. Now no more broccoli head. <laughs> so what is it with these kids? They got these broccoli head. I noticed that. When we're at the gym, the younger kids, yeah. like in their 20s, they all got this, like, broccoli hair going on. Yeah, it's on. a style. Like, that. what they'll do is they'll grow out this broccoli hair, and then they'll they'll get those earrings that, that like, hang. So it's like a – it's like a crucifix hanging and dangling from there. It, it's, it's some stupid, like, it, it looks ridiculous, who, but it's who like... Is, who made this? Some YouTuber or something? No, it, it's, it's no, just like it's just, just like some Zoomer look that they'll go for. It's just, it's stupid. This is thing. natural. I don't do anything to make it look like this. Well, you, I'm not you, talking about you. You have a broccoli head, too, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand yeah. that. I mean, like, I'm like, I don't you, do but, anything. Like, I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> like, they'll, they'll get perms and they'll actually, like, actually... Yeah. No, I thought it. He was shaving yeah. their heads. I was nuts. I was laughing. I don't have time to watch a lot of YouTube, but it was... Okay, so we got about 400 people here. Let's get started here. Here's, here's what we got. So we had a woman named Cheryl. And Cheryl got in touch with me, um, and she lived in Tyler. Now, I'm from Taylor. So is Anthony. Mm -hmm. We're not from Tyler. Tyler is up in northeast Texas. So she lived, she lived uh, in Tyler when she was young. And she lived in a house that uh, the only way to describe it is that it was haunted. I mean, that's pretty much it. You can't really, there's nothing else you can say about it. And, um, well, you can say a lot of things, but I mean, you know, the, the how, the why, whatever. She lived in a haunted house. That's, that's just it. It was just absolutely haunted. And so when she was about six years old, she began to see what she called the big dog. The big dog was what was the name, and her parents thought that the big dog was a an imaginary pet or or whatever, imaginary friend. Her sister was really allergic to pet dander, so they couldn't have animals. So she, they thought, oh, you know, Shirley wants a dog, so she made up a story about a dog. That's what it is. She's not really seeing a dog. It's just her ma imagination. That's cute. You know, you got a little imaginary friend but what she told me was that the big dog that she was seeing was a terrifying thing this was not a big dog that she made up in her mind because she wanted to um do we thank the people for the donation by the way i don't think we did gwen hunt and who else donated uh, they got sugar uh, bridges. yeah sugar bridges thank you for that donations sugar you shouldn't be donating that's not your job yeah you do enough yeah Somebody give uh, Liberty a wrench if you can do it from here. He needs uh, a wrench. Oh, uh, he already has one. Okay. All right. Go. Oh, that's so small. I can't even see <laughs> it. The wrench is like a little tiny little thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, so anyway, one of the things that, that this big dog did was just appear and it would sit at the foot of her bed. And when she would wake up to go to the restroom or try to, you know, the dog would growl at her and she would get back in the bed. The weird thing about it was it, sometimes it was visible and sometimes it wasn't. Most of the time it was invisible and she would hear it. And for the most part, it was always on all fours. It wasn't like a, a, a werewolf looking thing, at least not in the beginning. This thing would just kind of be there. It was just there. And she said one day she had a little friend over and we were playing and she's like, we were doing the little tea party thing and literally with stuffed animals and dolls and we had a little tea table and she's like, and it was my grandmother's little tea set and we were playing with it. And she said that her little friend got really scared because she said that she, she, she heard or well, heard and felt something behind her and she could feel like the breath of like an animal on the back of her neck. And this was like a, 
eight-year-old child. She said she was my age. We were eight years old. And she's like, and I had finally got a friend to come over. Thank you for that donation, Two Shadows. If anybody donates and we don't, thank you. We will thank you. So we appreciate the donation. So th 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 this animal, whatever it was, was breathing on her neck. And she said it wouldn't stop. And then eventually she kept turning around and was like, I know there's a dog in here. She said, we don't have a dog. And she's like, well, I saw a dog in the hallway looking at me with its head around the corner when you went to the restroom. And she told her friend, she's like, no, no, no. She's like, we, there's no dog. We don't have one. She's like, but I was terrified to tell her that for two years of living in this house, there was a dog. And she said, this dog got bigger. When she was a kid, it was the size of like a, a, a large, like an oversized German shepherd, right? Yeah. And it was black. And she said, sometimes, though, it would look gray. And I said, gray is in how? And she's like, a smoke gray? And I, she said, yeah, smoke gray. And I said, okay. And then she said, sometimes, after she was about eight or nine, the dog would talk to her. Mm. And she said, it never spoke. And then one day, it just said, hello. So this was just a regular dog? Regular dog. dog. Okay. Yeah, it didn't look like anything but a regular dog. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you, folks, and I think that this is an important story, and this is a long story, so buckle in. Buckle in, buckaroos. <laughs> Boy, that was cringe. <laughs> uh, I'm Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> it's ma'am. Call me ma'am. Punch you in the face. I'm an Olympic, I'm an Olympic champion. Call uh, me to find out what color lipsticks you have. I'm the woman of the year. <laughs> Man, we gotta stop. <laughs> yes, the, hey, people are gonna be leaving. They're gonna get you all hot and bothered in your man juices. Okay. So, so anyway, enough, enough. Stop. No more chuckle house. So, what ended up happening was that this thing, I'd say thing because I don't know what it was. Um, and she really didn't know what it was, but this thing has, there's, this is a long story now. She said that she was beginning to hear it talk at night. And she said at first it just said a couple words, it said hello. And, there was, and then she didn't respond, and she sat up in bed, and she was, like, going to respond. And then she thought, I don't think I should. And then it spoke her name. And they said, hello, Cheryl, or Sherry, as they called her. And she's like, hi. She's like, and then she's like, it sat up and put its head playfully on the on the foot of the bed and was like, you're the only one that can see me for now. And it's like, there used to be another child that lived here in this house and it didn't want to play. And she was like, yeah. She's like, um, that there was a, a girl that lived here, you know, and, and, and at that point she was already like in high school. Mm -hmm. She said, my brother goes to school with her. And she's like, yeah, she was really scared of me. And I like that you're not afraid of me. And then she said, but, Sometimes I am. So then she says, what is your name? And this creature told her, you can call me Mr. Wolf. And she was like, okay, I'll call you Mr. Wolf. And then he took his paw, which looked kind of like a hand, and pointed at the clock and was like, it's past your bedtime. There are really bad, dark things that live in this house, and I'm protecting you from them. So go to sleep, and don't be afraid. And she's like, sometimes you scare me. And he's like, I don't mean to. I'm trying to protect you. Just wants her for himself. And then she's like, okay. So then one day, her little brother, who was toddling at that time, was pushing a tricycle. Now, I don't know why this kid's not riding it. He's pushing it. But she said he was pushing it through the hallway, and he screamed. And she looks out the hallway, and she sees, his name is James. She sees James crying. And then when she runs over to see what's wrong, she looks up, and there's a man standing there. And he's wet. He's drenched from head to toe in water. And his face looked bloated. She's like looking back on it now as a nine-year-old child. She's like, I thought... This man looks like he drowned. 
And she said <clears throat> that he put his hand out and just kind of opened his mouth like, like, like something was wrong. And then he just kind of like started to go backwards and faded and was gone. And she's like, that was my introduction to what, the, what I called the water man. She's like, I saw him several times over the years, the last time being when I was 15. And she said that not only had she witnessed it, but during a thunderstorm, she had two friends over. And they played volleyball together. And they saw it too. And she said that we heard... Like this persistent knocking coming from nowhere, anywhere. They don't really know. And she's like, and my friend... She decides to go to the window and open it, and the rain is, you know, whatever. And they're like, what is that? Because they thought maybe it was coming from outside. And when she opens this window, she sees a man looking at her, just staring right at her, and she falls backwards and screams at the top of her lungs. She's like, and then they hear this growling noise that comes out of nowhere, and the man was gone. The next day, and I'm jumping around a little bit, the next day, the, the closet door opens, and her friends had just left. It was Saturday afternoon, and she was getting ready to go and do some stuff with her friends and meet them somewhere. And she's like, there it is, the wolf. And he just comes walking out of the closet. She said that he was starting to look a little different. No longer did he just look like a big dog. Now he looked like an oversized wolf. And his paws... The front paws in particular were beginning to elongate, almost into fingers. And she's like, you look different. She was talking to this thing. And it says, yeah, yeah, with your help, I'm becoming a better guardian. That's my job, is to protect you. And she said that sometimes this thing would talk in her mind, sometimes with images, sometimes with words, and then sometimes it would just speak. Well, this particular occasion, while she was talking to this being, her sister, who didn't believe a lick of it, anything that she had said about this, was walking down the hallway and stopped and was like, Sherry, who are you talking to? And she's like, oh, no one. She immediately lied. And the wolf was gone. And she's like, I heard a a raspy man's voice. That's what she said he sounded like. Kind of like this when he would talk. Like somebody who was whispering out loud. Like you're whispering, but you're just, you know. Mm -hmm. And she said that whenever this thing would talk to her, she would feel this weird fluttering in her chest, which she later realized was anxiety. It was giving her extreme anxiety, and she was terrified of this thing, and no one wanted to believe her. They were just like, oh, it's just your imagination, and even brought up the fact that her grandfather had had schizophrenia on her mother's side, and her dad pointed that out and was like, you know, they do things with people who don't outgrow imaginary friends, but she's like, this thing is not my friend. He says he's here to protect me, but I don't know if I believe it. When she said that out loud, she went upstairs, and right after that, the door slammed, and she heard, like, moving back and forth, and you could hear, like, footfall. You know, she knew it was like an animal. At this point, her sister had gotten, I don't know what happened, but the allergies or whatever were not as severe, and so they had two dogs. One was a little... Uh, uh, Schnauzer, and another one was a Spitz uh, German Shepherd mix. They did not like being upstairs. They stayed downstairs. They wouldn't go upstairs because that's where Mr. Wolf was. And Mr. Wolf was not fond of, of the other animals, in particular a cat that she got once her sister was out of the house. We'll get to that in a minute. And so this wolf began to become a very big part of her life. She goes, for years, he would show up in and out of my life, popping in and out. Did not know what this was. So one day when they were at church, she told the, pre the preacher about it when she was like 12. And this preacher acted like he was not concerned about it at all. Like he didn't care. He was just like, oh, it's an imaginary friend. 
usually girls by your age don't really believe in such things. But, you know, I can understand you, you maybe you're special, you know, and talking condescendingly to her. And she was like, I never brought it up to one of these preachers ever again. I gave up. I just said to hell with this. Nobody is going to believe what I'm saying. She's like, and in fact, she's like, it was so devastating that I felt isolated and alone that I turned inward. And then I became more and more comfortable with this entity. Now she's calling it an entity while she's talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that. And I said, you went from calling it a creature, a dog, a wolf. Now you're calling it an entity. She said, yeah, yeah. And I'll explain. She's like, and no surprise to me. Um, I'm not a dum-dum. I could kind of figure it out. But she said that this thing began to want more from her. Want more time with her. It wanted to for her to go out into the woods and go camping. And it wanted to tag along. And when she would ask it questions as a child, like, where did you come from? What are you? Who are you? It would say things like, I don't know what I am or who I am. I just know that I am. And I'm just here. I just exist. Never, ever really elaborating on what it was or who it was or where it came from. But then one day, she said, when I was 13 years old, she said that I asked it a question once again about its origin. And then she said that I saw that I, sometimes I could see through it. Like you could see it was like a, like a, like a wraith, you know, and she said, that said, okay, you want to know where I'm from? I'll tell you. She's like, very serious matter of fact voice. She's like, and if I wasn't accustomed to this, you weren't used to this. She's like, it would terrify you. You would think that this is the devil, right? And she said that this thing began to talk to her and it says, I come from a very, very dark place. It's in the Bible. It's a very dark place where beings like me are born. And we go through a horrible, horrible existence. Some of us escape. And then some of us are let loose. And it began to explain to her that it was once a different being and gave a name, which I'm not going to repeat. And the name that she said, she's like, wow, that's weird. And she said, so who gave you this name? And of course it answered and it said the fallen. And she's like, the fallen is in fallen angels. And of course, this being said, yeah, you can call him that. Rebellious, fallen, whatever. We come from the black swirl. That's where we live. It's like, I have no memory of my past or what I was. They call it reconstitution. Your energy is destroyed and it becomes something else. You lose your consciousness. That sounds Kabbalistic. Yeah, very much so. And it said that we come from a place that was destroyed. And now it's sucked in on itself like a black hole. And she was a child and she was like, wow. And so she began to write this stuff down. She wrote everything it said down for about three months about its origin. Sometimes the story would change slightly, which made her think this thing is lying or maybe it was altering, whatever. And then one day, she found her diary all chewed up. Hmm. So everything she had written down was taken away. And she said that this being began to become more and more aggressive. When she finally went out into the woods when she was 16 and went with this thing... She decided to invite a couple friends. Well, this being didn't like that. And it bit one of them. She said they were sitting by the lake, talking. 
And this thing came out of the woods and grabbed her friend by the arm and began to pull him and shake him and toss him about. And she says, I, I could see that it was him. It was the, it was the wolf. She's like, I yelled at it. I screamed at it to stop, but not until it had bitten him three times. Now she said that when she was little, the first time she had an interaction with this creature, it was still invisible. And all she saw was a mouth appear and it bit her hand. And when her, she showed her parents, she said the bite was small. This creature was small. When she first encountered it, it was like she was six years old. To her, it would have been the size of a, of a big dog, but not, you thinking of a six-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. A little bigger than her, she said. By the time she was 16, this thing was massive, probably the size of two wolves. When it bit this man, though, it was the size of a normal black wolf. And when they reported it, they said it was it was like a black wolf or dog. And they said, well, it must have been a coyote or a wild dog. She knew the truth. But she didn't want to tell these people that her friends, yeah, I see a massive black wolf that comes out of my closet. And it's been happening since I was six years old here 10 years later now. It's just attacked my friend's boyfriend. And it, she said that it bit her no less than four times. She said it bit her again when she was eight, each time drawing more blood and the, the marks being bigger. Leaving scars, real scars. Which her parents were baffled by it. They came up with every excuse. Must have been a raccoon or a, or a, a squirrel. Something got into the house and did a rat. She's like, no, these are canine bites. The third time it happened, she was like, I was nine. And she said that they go, went to the hospital and the, the nurse looked at it and said, this is, this, is a, this is an animal bite. It looks like a dog. When the, when the doctor looked at it, same thing. Her friend's mother used to be married to a veterinarian and had him come and look at it and said, this is, this is a canine, a canine bite. Where'd you get this? She said, oh, well, there was a dog in the backyard, which is where it happened, but it wasn't, wasn't a dog. The last time it bit her, she was 12. And she prayed that night. She said, I remember praying in earnest that God take this thing away from me. She's like, and I got so scared. She's like, and I had this voice that came into my head that said, say it out loud. Pray to God. Say it out loud. She goes, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. She's like, I stuffed it down. I didn't want to say it out loud because I thought the wolf's going to come out of the closet and he's going to hear me praying to God and he's going to become angry and it's going to do something to me. She couldn't get rid of it. And nobody would listen to her. Nobody would believe her about this vile being that was doing these horrible things. She said she had a friend who she found out later on, she confirmed, was being abused by her stepdad. And I'm not mm -hmm. going to get into it, but you can do the math. And she said that one day we compared notes, and I remember thinking, that's the abuse that I'm going through with this creature, only it's not sexual. It's an oppressive, abusive being that takes my energy, it keeps me up at night, and I can't sleep good. She's like, and I'm terrified because it stalks around my room, and I don't know if I'm going to wake up and it's going to be there. And she's like, and I don't know what it is, or who, where it's from. It's got, you know, it's got me all turned around. And she's like thinking. She's like, I hadn't had a good night's sleep in 10 years. She had a nervous breakdown and fell into a massive depression, and her parents put her in a facility, um, a psychiatric treatment facility. And she said for two months she was in there, and it was the best sleep she'd ever gotten. Huh. And she's like realizing that this thing was not her friend. She had drawn that conclusion a while back. But then she said that not only... Was it her friend, not her friend, but it was the enemy. And when she got out of that facility, she told her parents, she's like, when I turn 18, I'm moving out. I'm going to live with some friends, you know. 
And um, they were not upset. They weren't shocked by her announcement. And they were just like, are you sure that's what you want to do? And she's like, yeah, at this point she was 17 going, you know, she was, she was about nine months away from being 18. And she says, and, and I can't, I can't live here anymore. Because she said that she thinks the thing was based in that house. Because when she was gone for periods of time, this thing would eventually not be around. So it was like she would go back and sometimes it would follow her, but it wouldn't go like for, for like a long trip. Like, for example, they went to visit relatives uh, like years later up in Ohio and this thing didn't go with her. While she was there, she was at peace. Another time they took a trip to Disney World to Florida. She's like, and it was, I was at peace. Another time they went to California. Same thing. Her family visited Mount Rushmore. Same thing. This thing did not go with them. But if it was local, like when she went to visit her friend in Longview, she's like, it showed up out of the woods. She's like, it was like East Texas, that whole area where I was from, where I was living. She's like, yeah, it was there. And ultimately, she ended up moving to Longview. And then one day, she saw this thing about two months before she moved out, and it was on two legs. And at that point, she had never seen it do that. And it walked right into her room, leaned on the wall like a man, and folded its arms. And began to talk to her. And it told her, it was like, Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for helping me find myself. Very snarkily. Just like a man, like a person would say these things. And she says, how did I help you do these things? And it was like, well, without you, I couldn't have done anything. I would have just stayed a small, insignificant little whatever. She's like, but, but now I'm free to move around wherever I want. I have enough energy that I can do just about anything. I've really found myself. She's like, I got sick to my stomach. She's like, my head began to spin and I thought I was going to throw up and fall off the bed. She's like, I realized that this thing was telling me now it had enough energy and power to pretty much go wherever I went. She said, I began to cry. And this thing just laughed and then just walked into the closet into the darkness and disappeared. She said, I didn't see it again until I moved. And the day I moved, I looked up and I saw Mr. Wolf standing in the window and he waved. Hmm. She said, Two months after that, her mother was pushed down the stairs and she broke her leg. Then her dad was in a horrible accident and her dad at the hospital to told the, the, before he went unconscious, that something had grabbed the steering wheel. This thing had an ability. Now here's what happened. She moves to Longview. She goes and she's staying with some friends. And they're out on a, on a trip. And they're in Texarkana. And they're actually doing something really cool. They were retracing the steps of, and this is kind of how she found me because she's a Lyle Blackburn fan, and credit to Lyle. But she says, I, I like Lyle Blackburn a lot. And, and so she heard him mention me and or there was something that happened. I don't know. And she was retracing the, the steps of the, uh, and she went to the Falk uh, monster or whatever and heard him talk. And um, I guess she spoke to him or something. And, you know, they talked about the town that dreaded sundown. That's a movie that me and Garitana were talking about on the show one night. Mm -hmm. It's based on the phantom killer that, can you push this table this way a little bit? I don't know if you can. Like, like pull it towards you? Yeah, just this way. I'll do. Hey, Tony, can you pull it? I got it. Don't worry about it. Supernatural strength. Um, no, but this, this being or whatever, she's like, we hear this howling in the woods. She's like, 
were walking around in this park where this man, the phantom killer, had done what he did to these people. And if you don't aren't, aren't familiar with it, he killed several people in Texarkana. He was never found. Texarkana is literally called Texarkana because it's a city that's halfway in Texas and halfway in Arkansas. We've been through there several times. In fact, we went through there on the way to our conference in Tennessee, 2022. Interesting, this woman, she said, after listening to you, she's like, I knew that I had to give you this story. And here's the good thing. After giving me this story, she's like, I felt like this huge burden was released off of me, like lifted off of me. And she's like, I hope that it doesn't do something to you. And I told her, don't worry about it. It's not going to. This is not, it, it, I'll be fine. It's not going to. I get stories like this all the time. And she was actually afraid to tell this story to anyone in its entirety because she thought that it would do something to the people, that you know, whatever. And I told her, I was like, no, that's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Believe me, I'm okay. Other things, there's problems. But that, I'm not worried about. Um, but I told her, I said, do you feel like it's still around? She's like, no, not not so much anymore. She's like, every now and then, my children, I'm terrified that my children are going to come to me one day and say, hey, this and that, whatever. Um, her one son is now 20, and her daughter is like, you know, in her teens and nothing, you know. But when they were kids, sometimes they would say that they saw a black dog at the window. And then one time they had gone to Six Flags, her and her husband and her children, and they said that there was a big black wolf that was in the parking lot. And it was friendly. It came up to them and was letting them pet it. And she's like, I lost my mind with fear. And she's like, <sighs> she's like, I couldn't believe it. I told my children, I said, stay in the hotel. Don't go back out into the parking lot. She's like, and then I look. And she's like, and sure enough. 11 o'clock at night, I was sitting there. Everybody was asleep watching TV. I went ready to turn the TV off, go to bed. We went to go watch the Texas Rangers and, you know, go to Six Flags and do, you know, a lot of people in Texas, they do that. That's like a twofer. You go and you watch the game and then you go to the Six Flags, whatever. Um, I did it when I was a kid and a lot of people do. And it's in Arlington. It's where the Cowboys play too. It's a big uh, mecca for, you know, entertainment. There's another, uh, what is it called, Wet and Wild there, the water park? Whatever. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on there. Museums and stuff. Rodeo. So she said that we were there for a weekend of fun and entertainment, and it turns into terror because I look down and I see this black wolf. And I see it slide spider-like crawling underneath a car. And she said, at this point, she thought, could this possibly be the same thing? And she's like, and my heart sank, I knew it was. So let's back up. And she went to Longview. She stayed there for the summer with some friends, and they'd, she decided that she wanted to move there the next year. She had lived for about a year in a, in a little place out, out, out in the country outside of Tyler. And so he said she had a Bigfoot encounter when she was 19. She didn't think it had anything to do with this, but it was it was impressive, which made her go and look, go to the Falk Monster Festival and all that, going, you know, years later, she was all into trying to figure out what it was or whatever, and she's been looking for it ever since. Still to this day, looking. She was walking through the woods, and she heard, like, this crunching noise. And she hears a growl behind her, like a growl, like a dog growl. And she's like, I recognized it right away. I turned around, and there he was, Mr. Wolf. And he was pointing like this, expressionless. And then he told her, he's like, be careful. 
and then he was gone. She's like, I turn back around, and there is this giant chocolate-colored ape-looking thing standing in my path. She's like, and it was holding like a bundle of what looked like pine cones. And she's like, and it was just staring at me, and I was staring at it. And she's like, and we didn't move. We locked eyes, and it was a solid minute or two, maybe. She said, it felt like an eternity. She's like, and I could smell this weird smell. She's like, and then I hear this growl that gets more guttural and more demonic. And this thing just took off really quick into the woods and was gone. And then she said that, I, she goes, I had not heard or seen hide nor hair of Mr. Wolf in several months. She's like, and then when she's driving back to the house, she's like, this thing whispers into my ear, you're welcome. And she's like, I nearly run off the road. And then she stops and she begins to slam her hands on the steering wheel. And she's like, Mr. Turner, she's like, I lost it. And I was like, please call me Wolf. I'm joking. I didn't tell her. <laughs> I said, call me Josh because I didn't want to say Wolf because obviously Wolf, yeah, Mr. Wolf. That would be pretty inappropriate. Connotation is there, yes. And in fact, she's probably not listening because she said that she did not want to hear the story be retold. So she's not listening to this. But uh, I'm going to call her up afterwards and be like, listen to the replay. Go check it out. Listen to it. You got to listen to it. Check it out. Just listen. To it. <laughs> you're not going to listen to it? Okay, okay. I'm going to play it for you. Well, you're not true. I'm not going to do that to you, Cheryl. I will not do that to you. I will not do that to you. Okay? All right? I don't want you going to a conference and being like, Wolf is an asshole. And not just the werewolf one either, the guy. The, the, <laughs> both of them. Both I've of them. traumatized my life. <laughs> they, they have ruined my life. <laughs> uh but uh, so what ended up happening is that this thing, she pulls over and she's like, can you stop? Leave me alone. Get off of me. Go away from me. And then she's like, I had never said this before. She's like, for the love of God, leave me alone. She's like, and then her, her, her vehicle, her Jeep began to shake back and forth. And she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? She thought that it was going to be, you know, rocked over, tumped over into the ditch. This thing was pushing her vehicle back and forth. Everything all right? So then she said that she had this overwhelming urge to pray. She's like, she gets out of her vehicle and she just begins to walk right into the edge of the woods. And she goes and she finds a tree stump, literally, or a, a log, and she sits on it. And she's like, and I'm not even afraid at this point. I'm just so fed up. And I start praying. I'm like, God, take this thing away from me. And she said that there, through her prayer, there again was that voice she had heard before. It was a masculine voice, a very peaceful and calm. And it said, my child, ask and you shall receive. Ask for help. It will be given. And unfortunately, she said, once again, I, I didn't do it. I was stuck. Like I couldn't, I was in this holding pattern. I could not ask for the help that I needed to be free from this demon. Let's be honest. That's what it is. And she said that I just sat there in despair, praying and not asking for deliverance. And I never said it out loud. So then she says she gets up and she goes back into her vehicle and she drives. She gets to their, her, her house with the roommates and they're like, are you okay? You're, you're, you look like you've seen a ghost. And she's like, I think I did. I just saw something. Well, this is what was really cool. When she began to talk to them about what she had seen in the woods when she was, when she was jogging. One of the people in the house said, oh, yeah, I've seen a Bigfoot. Now, this is the big ticket area. This is where it's full of Bigfoot encounters. They're everywhere. It's like, it, to me, it rivals anywhere in, in, in the country, even the Pacific Northwest, because it's so inundated with them. From the southeast of Texas all the way up to the north, the thicket, it's really, 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 really heavily wooded 
one of two places in the country considered jungle. The other one being Florida, the Everglades, a swamp. And she said that, um, it's like this, this guy that they let you live with, Tim, told her. He's like, I've seen one. And when they even described the, the same thing to one another, same color, everything. It was like a, you know, like we were comparing notes. But she dare not tell him about her thing that followed her around, giving it help, giving its help to her. And he said, yeah, this thing that I saw, it jumped down out of a tree. And it just stood there looking at me. He's like, and then I began to panic and felt like I was going to have a heart attack. And I turned and I ran the opposite direction. And I didn't look to see if it followed me. I just ran back out of the woods and got back to the park. And it was in another area, but not where she was at. But I believe they're all over that area. And Dogman, too, unfortunately. This thing began to show itself as a large wolf coming up to their house. And then it attacked one of their dogs, killing it, unaliving it. What really disturbed her about that was not the fact that it did that because she knew for a fact that it had done this to two of the neighbor's animals. What really disturbed her was that it drug it out into the woods. And when they eventually found the remains that had been partially eaten, she goes out into the woods and she screams. And it appeared sitting up in a tree, just wagging its tail and moving its legs back and forth, and then it jumped down in front of her. And she said, it was only about two feet from me. And she said, this thing was about eight foot tall. It was a monster. It was a nightmare. And she's like, why? And with tears down her face, she asked a question to this being. She's like, why did you do that? And he said, why not? And it admitted to her right then and there, it was like something you need to come to terms with. Um, I'm a predator. That's what I do. That's how I grow. So she asked it why it needed to feed. And this is most important. This is why I'm telling you this story is really important. Because if Cheryl's story is to be believed, and I have two people who have kind of corroborated some of this. She asked it a question that I think we've all been wanting to know from these monsters. Let's just call them what they are. Why do you need to eat flesh? It says, well, there's two different ways we grow. We suck energy and we eat. And like any predator... Blood and flesh feed us. She's like, yeah, since I've known you, all I've known of you is to eat pets. Do you eat deer? Are you out in the woods eating deer? And it was like, oh, no, no, no. No, I eat what I need to become. Now, remember, this part right here, I stopped her and I said, okay. That's when I had to take a break and I said, let me ask you a question, Cheryl. I need to know. This thing was always on, on force. Then all of a sudden it was vertical. So it's telling you that it becomes what it consumes in a literal sense I said that is a problem so I'm like what did it consume to be standing upright right Tony yeah. I mean, that was the first thing I thought I was like what was it eating I mean 
because like, you have two options here <laughs> and both of them are kind of scary one i think is a little bit more terrifying but did it eat a human to become upright or did it eat an actual creature that is like a dog man and or then, a bigfoot or a bigfoot and become upright like that and if so is it like a combination of previous things it's eaten like a wolf and then uh and then it turns into our combination like a mixture or whatever and then in that case are bigfoot so similar where are they do they start off as something else and they just eat and through a certain combination of the however it turns into a bigfoot it, it kind of like the scare the story kind of opens up a lot of things because it kind of like if it's you know to be led to be believed which you know i i think you know it's definitely given me a lot to think about it kind of makes it, it gives like credence to all supernatural creatures or cryptids at the very least because then it, it becomes less of like what they are and more about like oh what combinations of creatures did they consume to become what they are mm-hmm so oof. I think it was interesting too the way it started out as a to her was a big dog and then by her own admission she was a small six year old so it was big because it was so I, I asked her I said if you can remember and think back as best you can but I said Shirley this is most important to me in my research and I told her I said can you remember like how big it was was it like a small dog like you know I know it was big to you as a six-year-old, but I asked her, I was like, would it be considered like to a, a grown adult? Like how big was it? She's like, I really can't compare it because I never saw it next to my parents or anyone else. She said that, but then she remembered she had this big pillow that her her dad would take on trips and stuff like that. And she liked that big pillow. And so her dad eventually gave it to her and just got another one. And she said that it was like half the size of her dad. And that pillow was about the size of that dog. So you think that this thing was about the half the size of a grown adult. And then it turns into like an eight foot tall, mm -hmm. beastly, bipedal monster. I mean, I, I most that pillow's like, what, two, two to three feet. I mean, so thing grew what five inches or i mean five feet over the span of yeah something like that. 10 years 10 10 15 years corley canner has a good uh, point there he says but you can't really believe anything it tells you so you don't know yeah like that's that's the case too but at the same time like why 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 does it lie why, why does it care now i mean mm -hmm. I, I, like Beforehand, I think it was probably just secretive because it needed to feed. So like it would it wouldn't tell you the whole truth because if you knew that hey it, like if it came out just from the get go saying like oh I'm not some protector I come from a really dark place full of like really nasty beings and our whole thing is that we're just bad people. It's you're not obviously not going to be accepting of it as much. But she obviously was throughout the years. She had no choice. She had no choice. Like she literally was forced, or this thing forced itself up upon her, and then she was also just forced to deal with it. And <clears throat> because of that, it kind of grew and grew and grew and grew. And then once it got to a certain point, it was just like, okay, fine, I can tell you now. I'm strong enough now to where like you knowing isn't going to affect it. And then even at this point, it's where like I'm at the peak of where I need to be. Like, even if whatever I tell you, you can believe it or not, it doesn't matter to me because it's not going to change what I am. So I think, like, that was reason was why I would have reason to believe it. Yeah. Thank you, Rita, for that donation. Rita, always coming through for us. We are definitely um, in need of some... funding to get some things done at the least of which is just legal stuff we got to go through now i do believe though that those well we're not going to talk about that uh yeah thomas says thank you when what an awesome donation it is rita is like an all-star she's an mvp rita if you haven't gotten anything from us already just you name it we'll send it to you her and kate hunter and liberty yeah those are the people that keep us going and then uh 
the guy from last night, the, the, the guy that owns the security company. He's a good guy. Oh, yeah, Venture Security. Yeah, Venture. Uh, okay. I was going to say his name. I don't know if I should say his name. But um, but yeah, Rita's always coming through. Yeah, really good people that help us and helped us get through some, you know, because like I said, and we never beg or ask for anything. And so, you know, people do, they say that, and that's not true. That is a little lie. Anybody that watches the show knows that's not true. We just do our work. And um, part of it is doing this. And sometimes when you talk to people, I'm not going to lie, folks, it is an emotional roller coaster. Like I have had to sit there in an afternoon. Y'all have heard me, and they're talking to people. And they are kind of dumping problems on you, you know? Um, and it's not, I'm not like, oh man, you're burdening me with it. It's, I'm listening and I'm going like, dude, bring it to me. I'm built for this. Trust <laughs> me. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of this little wolf thing, whatever. It's not little, but yeah, I don't give a, that, that thing. I don't care. Over the past several years, I've learned to not care anymore. Um, the dreams and all the other crap and just doesn't phase me. And I'm not afraid to go in the woods anymore at all, at all, at all. I mean, got over that a long time ago. Um, there was a time when I would tell you, yeah, damn right, I wouldn't go because I saw what I saw. But God has a way of changing things. And when he gives you something, you have to do it. You have to take it. And it's not a matter of what I want now. It's not up to me. You know? Mm-hmm. That's why uh, I'm, I'm kind of thankful that you got that uh, office because... You know, it gives you time to have that one-on-one conversation that, you know, a lot of these Mm -hmm. uh, experiencers need. Also, it gives you, I think, a space to kind of unwind because, like you said, it can be kind of a lot to take in. And a story, especially like this one, is hard to, you know, hear and just basically just hear about someone being, you know, like she said earlier, abused for her most of her entire life. And just constant harassment. So, I mean, um, I think having that space for you to just sit there and unwind after the stories uh, is also just helped your mental space. But I think it's also helped you kind of like, like your storytelling become better. Yeah, you can think, flush it out better. And yeah, I, th- I think with this story here, you know, I, I did feel an uneasiness. And but but I've, you know, it, it each one of these encounters has its own character to it has its own energy and um i have had to deal with that through these stories um people who you know and i'm never going to be that that guy that's like yeah you know i'm a therapist i'm over here helping people whatever dude if you help people that's a byproduct of it i'm not here to be a therapist let's be honest let's just tell the truth you know, I get the encounters and I retell them. But in the process, if I can help someone, I will. I'm not doing this, though, to help people. I'm not. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, this is a form of entertainment. But you have to understand something. And I told this to a guy from where I, that I used to work with. And then he got on there and repeated what I told him. Like it was his words. It wasn't. It was from me. But um, I told him, I said, this is entertainment to a lot of people. But in reality, it's not entertainment because the people that are are going through this, this crap that they're going through. Yeah. But you, there has to be an entertainment factor or people won't listen. And for the people that are able to have someone to, and, and he does do that. He's someone to talk to. So in that respect. You know, he, he, it is cathartic for them to tell your in, the encounter or to tell him. But one of the things I feel like I can do that he doesn't, and, and, in mo- and most of the others don't unless they're faking, um, is retell the encounter correctly and to convey the emotion and the feeling that they have. Because some of these people don't feel like telling this intimate stuff to an entire audience, which is why she's not listening right now. Because I told her tonight, I'm going to tell your story. And she's like, mm, I won't be tuning in. And I asked her again. I was like, are you okay with me telling? She said, I think it needs to be heard. I said, I do too. And sometimes people tell me encounters. And Anthony, Tony, y'all know this. We can't repeat them. Yeah. That's the hard ones because 
you're sitting on this information and I'm like, I can't repeat this. You know, even though I, I look, I could use a pseudonym or something and they would just say, I prefer you not to. Well, then that's it. Then you can't do it. You know, simple as that. And I respect people's rights to do and say, you know, whatever. And, you know, we also accept those. I mean, we're totally fine with those. But sometimes like some stories that, you know, we'll get like you'll relate to us and we'll be like, that would be a really good one on the show. And you, you, you'll be like, yeah, but I got to respect her wishes or I got to respect their wishes. They don't want to said they don't want to said, but it, it really is a good story. Yeah, it's a it's an entertaining thing. And <clears throat> if I were to do what a lot of these people do and just have one person on a week to just to tell an encounter, that's fine. But then you're you're just pretty much you're just if you're those people anyway, you're just doing that one person's story that day. That's it. You know. Whereas with 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 you have the ability to retell, you can actually do more than one and you can, you know, and you get a wider range of information that's coming. And I think having being being a good researcher is an important thing too, because a lot of people aren't. Yeah. They're not. They don't yeah. do the research. They don't put the threads together. They act like each story is just unconnected from the next. And to me, I even think that that thing saw the when she saw the Bigfoot, she believes that that's not connected. I believe it is connected. And I'll tell you why. Because when you were uh, gone for a minute there, Anthony, mm -hmm. um, Tony and I were going over why this thing started out as like this medium-sized dog. I would say medium-sized. No. Maybe to her it was large because she was a child. Children think everything's, you know, big. When you're a kid, you're like, wow, that's a big building. And when you get old, you're like, it's three stories, you know. Um, <clears throat> Carlos, a wolf, Mexican with stories. <clears throat> well, speaking of Carlos, we're going to have to tell his story. But here's the thing. you got to understand something. What was it that this thing was eating to make it upright and walking around like a man? Yeah, it had to have, it, it had to have been eating something bipedal. Which would which would only only be human beings or maybe like other bipedal cryptids, or somehow broke into a zoo and and you know ate a chimp or, or a you know a gorilla. Or so. I mean, like what what else walks around on two legs? Bigfoot, bears, I guess. But they don't really spend. They just kind of happen to be on two legs sometimes. They don't spend their lives on two legs. Like I said, a bigfoot. Yeah. Because that bigfoot ran. Yeah. This thing could be not be a dog man. It could not be a werewolf. It's not well, a werewolf. I think it's like a race of of of, of beings because like, you know how like I'm always uh, saying that the art imitates life a lot more than the other way around. Um, like it reminds me of this of this of this being it, like somewhere in between this being that that uh, was on like two different like one was in a movie and one was in a miniseries. A movie was called uh, Daniel Isn't Real and it, it stars a. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, Patrick Schwarzenegger, but he, he he plays this being that appears to this kid, and and uh, only the kid can see it. So everybody thinks this is his imaginary friend, the, and the being appears as a kid, and it, it slowly over time tries to get him to to do like mean, sadistic things and to corrupt him. And, and by the time he, the kid realizes what it is, it's like it it it's so entrenched into his life that it's like he can't he can't get away from it. And then, but it's also reminds me of The Outsider, which is a Stephen King miniseries, which is about this being that just, it, it's so old and primordial. It has no oh, yeah. recollection and, of, of where Tana it's from. You and trying to tell me about that. Yeah, it doesn't know, it doesn't remember where it's from. It has no <clears throat> sense of identity. All it knows is that it has to consume to live. And so that's all it does, you know. Okay, so we got something going on in the chat here. Madeline, who usually doesn't have anything good to offer, um, <laughs> She's probably like, what? <laughs> uh, didn't its paws start looking more like hands? Yes, because I think that it was feeding off of her energy essence. I think that's what that was. But it wasn't this dramatic shift. Like one day, it just came in the room and was standing upright. It had a something very dramatic happen. It went through puberty real quick. But... <laughs> something. 
But uh, um, and it also, it kind of reminds me of <clears throat> the story that we had back then, uh, way back. Uh, not really that far, but uh, the Sentinels. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when, uh, when the like the, <sighs> it's like it was this thing that that was that was forming in this in in the in the witness's bedroom yeah then the aliens came by and they, yeah they, the aliens were scared of it yeah then it, it attacked one of them or whatever well you think this thing is one of those sentinels it kind of no. sounds similar. How? well because it started off as something really small like it, it grew over time into its its form i think yeah uh, but this thing started off as as a sentient being that 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 was communicate or uh, not... instead of itself it started off as something real small and i uh -huh. think like it just over time ate things like it was saying and then, and then she it came upon her so it was a more viable whole uh pose because i mean it, it's a it's a parasite basically mm -hmm. it's literally just what like it's i think doing. it like whoever it appears to it gets off on on that on that person sharing what they're going through with other people and other people not believing it because it, it's a form of isolating that person and then uh what they do is they'll they'll uh pull this like psychological manipulation where they convince the person that that they need them in their lives that they create this narrative like this perception that that they like like that they are all that's standing in between that person and like absolute oblivion and and, and they masquerade as like their guardian so that so that uh, that person like not a... only accepts them uh, accepts this being in their lives, but also like uh, d doesn't want to let go of it. Like they they actively welcome it, and then by the time they realize what's going on, it's like it's too late. You know, it, it's taken it's taken. It's like you're past the point of no return. Well, guardian, at, at least that's the worst case scenario. Guardian, almost like a like a sentinel kind of, huh? Yeah, but like I'm saying, that it, it doesn't. No, I mean I get what you're saying. It's just it, like that sentinel didn't it, appear to someone over the time. The sentinel like seemed a more like just thing, an apex though. predator. It seemed more like something that was just built to hunt, and then this thing seemed more like it plays more on a manipulative uh, playground where it kind of does play on someone's emotion and isolates them. and And I think. I I, th I think its main objective is to feed, though, on its well, host. We're, we're, there's oh, yeah. two comments on here. Eve Ayer says, yet the entity was getting human blood from the victim and her friend, unfortunately, during the camping trip, hence consuming humans. But that wasn't like eating no. flesh. That is a good point, though. I think... See, hold that thought. Don't, don't, don't. Just, just, just hold on to it, but don't lose it. One of the things that I told you guys... And I, and I think I told Nelly this too. What the heck was that? Did y'all hear that popping noise? Oh, no, no, that was my shirt. No, this... there was a popping noise from out there. You didn't hear it? Like a bag or something? Like, you know, those bubbles? Yeah. No, I mean, my chair was making noise, so I couldn't hear anything. It sounded like a bag. Hmm. Like a plastic bag. There is a plastic bag out there. I know, I see it, but that, I thought it... Uh... Anyways, whatever. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> if something could have moved that. Anyways, folks, so so one of the things, and I told you guys this, and I think I told Nelly this too, and I, and I know I told Scorp because me and him were on the phone about it last night. Um, this, I knew that this story, when I told this story, that we were going to get some of the answers in the chat. And I, and I kid you not, I was expecting and hoping that that, because our audience is smart. I'm not pat patronizing you. I'm sitting here telling you this. I am not buttering you up shining you on and it's the truth yeah like bubble wrap yeah dragon um anyways it, it, it's weird because you know like like um so many other you know chats and i'm not talking about like our friends that have because a lot of the same people will be in their chats too but i think it raises all ships when you have a show like ours and i'm not patting us on the back but i am patting us on the back because as a team as a whole all of us we come up with with good answers in the chat, I had somebody telling me the other day that they're and they're not a, they're not into the paranormal, or whatever, but but they they were talking about how they were watching my chat, and um, he's a a fighter, a, a a boxing guy. He likes to box, whatever. And uh, so we we were chatting, we were commenting on, um, was it Ryan Garcia? What's his name? Uh, oh yeah, and uh, uh, 
So yeah, we were commenting when he says, dude, I was in your chat the other day. And he says, dude, your chat, because your people are smart. Like they, he goes, I'm watching this and I'm not into the paranormal. He is now a little um, more than he was. And he said, dude, I was in there. And he goes, and your, your audience pays attention and they say, give you good information. And I said, that's our, our audience is very intelligent. They're very clever. Um, so, yeah. And so Eve had that comment. And then you have this one here. <clears throat> Glades Creature says, Morgan, everything is connected to some degree. The ghost you saw when you were little and the cryptid when you were a teen has a connection, even if there's a difference in my opinion. See, definitely. And then somebody says, Stephen King knows something. <laughs> I will mm -hmm. tie on that hill. Yeah, I think so too. And then you have another comment here. Um, it was right below that I wanted to say. And I missed it. Now I can't find it. But it was Eve's comment. Uh, Lisa Ray says, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. That's an, that's another. In, in, yep. And then Lola says, then again, we are assuming it is being truthful to her. And it could be a skin walker. Well, now, I mean, let's just assume it is being truthful. Okay. So for the topic of discussion mm -hmm. here. Let me answer that real quick. I don't think it's a skin walker because it's not a person changing into something this is not a werewolf i do not i do not believe this being is a werewolf i don't believe it is a skinwalker and i don't believe it's a dog man and those could all be the same thing or they could all be something different and it's definitely not a bigfoot whatever this thing was or is is something unto itself now it could be a testament or a credit to those beings that it be tries to imitate them yeah, Foxtail says this is a trickster. Very possible. What is so insidious about this being, though, is that it, like, like I said, it went from being on all fours and then throughout her life for years, she just saw it as a black dog. And next thing you know, it's standing there with its arms and it's up, up against the wall. And when she, when Cheryl was telling me about this, and, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, she she became interested in this, like I said, when she went to, to the Falk, whatever, she, she found out that there was a conference, festival, whatever, and then she met Lyle and then uh, found me. But when you stop and look at this, now how did it end up here where we all talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And she said that from the time that she first started messaging me, weird things started happening around her house. Like her husband was literally writing a check and her, his pen just popped and exploded and ink went everywhere. And he was just like, wow, what the hell, you know? Huh. So like there's all this insanity going on in her house. She said that literally see, they were asleep at night. And this happened when she was a kid too. And she said that we'll start with the incident when she was a child. When she was 12 years old, in the middle of the night, they would hear bang, bang, bang coming from the, the, the hallway, coming from the living room, the den or the kitchen. And they would go and they would find doors that looked like they were kicked in, like splintered and busted, or like somebody was punching them with a fist. So one night, at the, the first night she corresponded with me when she found out about my show or whatever, credit to Lyle, I think he was wearing like a paranormal roundtable shirt or something. Um, and she, she was a Lyle Blackburn fan, didn't know I existed. Um, but uh, she, she started watching me, and then I think she watches Barton's show too. Um, but it's crazy what she, you know, what she was telling me. And I know she, I know she got uh, started uh, watching Bettina. She said she was in, interested in Bettina saying it's because of uh, Lance Hightower, Monster Four One One, like him and Lyle were the only people she knew really anything about. And so now she watches me and, and Bettina. She's into her stuff. And, and I think uh, Barton, too. You know. He's in the chair. Oh, there's Bar yeah, there's Barton the right there. So, yeah, he says, hi, Sugi. There's Barton right there. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, we just just talking talking crap about you, Barton. Let me stop now that you're here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I better stop. Uh, so what, what ended up happening, you know, she kind of went down the rabbit hole. And she said that the minute she started talking to me, about this she's like she felt like this weight had been left lifted, lifted off because it wasn't over but she felt like it was coming to a conclusion that this thing was going to lose its power 
And so then she was worried that maybe it was going to attach itself or something like that. And I told her, I said, don't worry about that. We're good. But this being or whatever it was um, started to like whisper in her ear again, like when she was a child. And she said that one of the things she said, which was really uh, int intriguing to me, um, she said that she started having nightmares again. Like it started up, but then the more that, that we were able to correspond and eventually talk, then it stopped. There was no more of that. And she said that one of the things that it did too was like in the middle of the night, she heard this banging noise and they go and the pantry door had been completely just kicked in and the pantry doors like those you know, they kind of open like that those accordion yeah. type doors and they were broken and pushed in and snapped like something had attacked it and her pets were hiding they were hiding under the beds um her daughter's cat had been like in hiding wouldn't hadn't wouldn't shown itself it was jumping room running from room to room like something was there hmm. so i asked her about this the other day uh because she was in the chat on friday and when, when I talked to her uh, on Saturday, she said that nothing has been happening at all. Nothing. In, up to the point of the show tonight where she said, well, I'm not going to listen because, you know, and, that, and that's okay. I, I, I understand mean, why. The unproductiveness of these, well, let's call them demons for now, is really annoying because the, he could have really gotten a good job in demolition and done a lot of work there. Because all it seems like that he does is destroy stuff and cause harm at this point. I mean, it sounds like he was throwing a tantrum, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that these things like to antagonize and and intimidate. Um, when they the first dog that they got, or first pet that they got was an, was a hamster, and they had a guinea pig, and, and her siblings and them they had they each had like a like, and she had a gerbil, and she said that. Uh, all of them were, were just, they woke up and they were all dead. Like all of them just uh, deceased in one night. And mm -hmm. this thing, she could hear like a snickering laugh. But she said that, that the, the, the being that she called the water man was coming up the stairs one night when she was going down the stairs and she wasn't even paying attention. And she's like, I look up and he's at the foot of the stairs. And he's staring up at me. And she said it was like he was looking through me. And once again, he opened his mouth. She's like, and then she, she's like, I looked down and my hands and my arms were covered in water. And it was like, it smelled like, like the lake, like, you know, lake water or something like fish or something. And she ran upstairs crying and went and took a shower. And this was when she was getting ready to go out with some friends. And now this, this though is interesting. This wolf-like creature, her, nobody in the family would see it. Until one time her brother caught a glimpse of something go around the corner with a big tail. And she thought that was all he ever saw of it. But comparing notes years later, she said her dad was not very hard on the girls, but was kind of hard on her brother, you know? Like he was expected to be, he was held to a higher standard. So that he wouldn't really talk about what was going on. But she thinks that there was a lot more than he let on. And one of the things that, that she thinks he did was suppress it. And so one day, Thanksgiving, they were all having a talk, or I'm sorry, it was uh, Christmas, and they were all having a talk about the you know childhood and all that. And her brother was like, do you remember that thing that would come into our rooms and growl at night? And she was like, you heard it? And he's like, yeah, you remember we talked about it. So then there was a conversation that happened between her brother uh, and then the, the youngest, the younger one, who was a lot younger than them, he was kind of the mistake, I guess. Um, but then there was this whole conversation, and she, he's like, you don't remember us talking about it to mom and dad? And this thing coming into our rooms and growling? And the older sister was like, you don't remember that? And she does not remember that at all. Huh. She don't remember them having interaction with this thing. They didn't see it, but they would hear it, and it never spoke to them. It focused on her. But they would hear it growl and make noise and even knocked a, uh, a jar of pennies off of her sister's uh, nightstand of a, a dresser and broke and shattered it. And they went all over the place. I think that's credence to what Anthony was speaking earlier about the isolation. It was kind of thing that they have trying or that they're trying to do where like, even though it's obvious that it's affecting all the kids, she thinks it's only affecting her because of, of Correct. whatever mm -hmm. it's doing. It tries to isolate you yeah. and make you feel alone. Mm -hmm. 
and that's one of the things that John Zaffis had said that they, these things like to try to, uh, you know, get you by yourself because of what happened to John when he went down the stairs at the, ha- the haunting of Connecticut, uh, in Connecticut, whatever, when that thing did what it did. And, uh, me and John have a lot of mutuals and, and I've heard a lot of different, you know, stories, um, you know, about what he's gone through, what he went through that, you know, for somebody like him who is, you know, he's related to the Warrens, you know what I mean? That was like to him, the most terrifying thing. And he publicly said that, you know, and the, the, but he broke the cardinal rule of not being alone. And I think that, you know, when it says in the Bible and it says in the Quran too, that you're not supposed to sleep in a house alone. <laughs> yeah. People say, well, that's metaphorical. I, I can't believe the way people do this. It's like, if they agree with something, then it's literal. If they don't, well, it's metaphorical. And then they, you know, and it's the same thing with the Bigfoot people. They're like, yeah, the Native Americans have a lot of stories about the Bigfoot, whatever. Well, they think that they're all metaphysical and, sp- and spiritual. Oh, you know, a bunch of wild Indians out there. I don't know what you're talking about. They're savages. Yeah. We're yeah. just going to we're just gonna go ahead and ignore that part, you know. It's like they, they pick and choose what they want to something to be, what they want to, you know. So then mm-hmm. let's let's pretend like. You know, this isn't what it is because it doesn't fit a narrative that I'm spinning or that I have decided to whatever. Sorry, Dinah Russo says, I'm, I am I live alone and it's freaking me out. <laughs> well, you should be. I'm joking. I, I have hmm. no idea about that. I just know that. But I think that the passage, though, doesn't say a man. It says a man is not supposed to sleep alone or something. Uh, like that. I think it says yeah. the one in the Quran says a man should not sleep in the desert alone or something like that. Right? Yeah, you're not supposed to sleep. You're definitely not supposed to sleep in the desert yeah. alone. Um, I'm not a Muslim, but I can get, I can believe that. You know, it's not. I'm not going to because I slept out in the desert alone one time when I was in a guard shack, and it was in the middle of the desert, and I was like – no, it, I had a weird dream. It scared the crap out of me. I was like, wow, no wonder we're not supposed to. But it felt like something was there. Um, no, but it says a man is not supposed to sleep alone. Um, you know, and, and it's because of something that could come to you when you're by yourself, you know, and you sleep overnight, you know. I, I could say this. One of the things that, that we, she said that when when they were camping, up in, uh, uh, I guess he went to, went to Mount Rushmore or something. They were camping somewhere like in South Dakota or something. And it was in the summertime and they went to some campground. And she said that her brother had a terrifying nightmare. And years later, he had told her that he was dreaming that he was being chased by this wolf ape looking creature. Now, if the, the, the idea of this creature being another type of entity that gets its energy from, from, you know, consuming, you know, whether it's a, on a physical or ethereal, you know, plane. What if this Gugwe, what if it is one of these creatures? What if that thing, this is just, I'm spitballing here, folks. Don't take it like, you know, it could be literal. It could, it might not be out oh, my back. Um, uh, uh. But what if this thing consumes a Bigfoot and it consumes a dog man and it becomes a gugwe. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, what if it starts out like a crawler? Like that, that's the thing is like, what the heck really like it kind of throws a new aspect to all of these. Spiders are born like white, you, yeah. know? you know, when they're babies and then they, yeah. they get their color as they, as they eat, as they feed. The, the crawler crawls around like a spider. I don't know what the default form of this thing is. That's what is I'm it, wondering. Yeah. Sometimes the crawler looks like it has no feature, like the Fresno uh-huh. crawlers. They have no features. And then other times they st- they have they start to take on more features. Then what if they continue to feed, and then when they eat a dog man or a Bigfoot, then they become that. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not saying. Why leave it only at Dogman and Bigfoot? I mean. Well, like, no, let, let me, before you, look, I'm going to say this, folks, and, and please, because it's just like the, the Anunnaki thing, whatever, people get all lost on that. Before I go any further, I'm throwing it out there as a theory. I'm not saying this is what I believe. Yeah, that's one. For the love of Henry, yeah. please do not go and rip on. Oh, this guy says, you know, he believes that things are eating Bigfoot and Dogman. Oh, no, no, no. 
you know, I mean, get the banjos out and start acting mm-hmm. a fool. Bang, 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 big foot dog, man. This thing, bang, 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 bang. Let's go and let's make a bunch of videos about it. No. Just, I'm just spitballing here. Am I allowed to do that? I don't know if I am. But that's what I'm saying that this thing could be. I'm giving you an option because this thing was telling Churl, look, you know, I'm growing basically alongside you. I came from this dark place, the abyss. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like you said, the way that it talked was very Kabbalistic. Yeah. Um, it's like a demonic entity that's feeding on things, whatever. I mean, we have to think, don't, don't just think outside the box. Think outside the entire matrix and what we're dealing with. I mean, that's what this is about. That's what this show is about, Valerie. Yeah, you are what you eat. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, like, I think it's important to to, to try and... Uh... <laughs> Dacia Sanford says her closet is not going to Narnia. <laughs> 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 but uh, I, I, I think it's also important to, to think about, like, the... the definitions of like words that we're uh that we're using to describe like these creatures or phenomena because when we say like eat or consume i mean like who's to say that that, that what whenever they eat or consume an, another living thing that that it's that it takes place the way we think it takes place like, like as in you're literally eating something and digesting it uh yeah you know, i mean like what if it's more was... complicated than that? like what if the process is actually a lot more complicated than that but it, it's just the the uh our language is so limited that, that uh, it can only express it with like with words that w- with like eat or consume something, but it's not. It doesn't take place the way we think it takes place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, um, you know? I was. This is what Just I was. Like the gonna... Greeks have four words for love. We only have one. This is what what I was going to mention earlier was like uh, consume doesn't nec- like doesn't necessarily mean what it m- might mean by what what we might think it means, because if you notice. In that story, she like the creature started having like fingers after a period of time of drinking her blood, but yeah, I think bit her, her like three or four times, three or four times. But then it started mm-hmm. like changing. So and, I think and what, what it, if it when bit it, other people too. I think when it means consume, I think it means like entirely. And I think like if you combine a little bit of science with maybe whatever this is, it might be actually changing the DNA or incorporating the DNA. So it might actually need to consume like the entire thing. So. Um, like uh, there's a channel called a uh, Roanoke Gaming where they take a lot of like monsters and creatures and movies and stuff and kind of use microbiology or or, or um, just regular biology and try to make sense of it in this world or try to make sense of how a creature like that could exist. And I think like sometimes you have to do a little bit like that with this stuff, where it it might be doing something on a very like scientific level that we don't understand because there's a new aspect that they have that we don't. And whatever this creature does, it's obviously very, it's it's incorporating whatever it eats into itself. So I think that means that it's changing its DNA to fit whatever form that it's eating. And because it didn't change into a human based on the fourth, uh, three or four times it bit her and also the time it attacked her, uh, her friend's boyfriend, I think it needs like a large quantity of DNA to do it. So that time when it disappeared and suddenly grew into some eight foot monstrosity, mm-hmm. like what happened in that time? Where did it go? And I think because she wasn't there, it was just wandering those forests and ate whatever it could find. I don't, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Anthony? Uh, I don't know. It's just hard to wrap my head around. Um, if you got questions, audience, put them in capital letters so we can. I mean, over. I think that this this thing is is like a is like a specific race of beings that that, that has like a specific way of of uh, I guess hunting their prey because you know uh, like if 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 life on this spiritual or astral plane is like a, a reflection is like a mirror image of of life here because you know as in the spirit as in the flesh then would it not make sense that that because different uh predators here on earth they have different methods of hunting they have different prey that they go after you know um depending on what species they are 
So, I mean, like, why not? You know, like, why can there not be the different kind of like types or species of spiritual beings that are predators and that they have very specific ways of hunting and they go out to specific types of prey, whereas this one will, will uh, like, his, his method of hunting is to appear to a child as a child and, and to kind of grow up with that child and to, to, to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, become entrenched in their lives. And because, and, um, you know, children are very prone to the power of suggestion. So it would be very easy to to try and slowly like suggest to to your to your prey um, that that they partake in certain behaviors that would then open them up spiritually to your negative uh, influences. There and then that that would then uh, just like increase your power over them, you know? And you, you just, it, like, they play the long game, in other words. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it kind of also depends because then, like, we have to determine what its, it's base form is. I mean, if it's, uh, for instance... Yeah, that's like, the scary part. F like, the, this is what... It, it leads me into so many past stories and it makes me, like... I, I feel like I have a map and I'm, like, connecting all these red lines. But, like, it makes me think of the black goo. Or, or like that black goo that turned into, I think it was like a pig or, or it turned into some kind of animal. Um, Which one? Was it the guy that came on and said he saw the pig turn into a camper, like a guy? Well, no, no. I'm talking about like he saw like some kind of goo moving around and it turned into some kind of... Oh, that was one of the stories... Uh... Mm. Which one was? There was a few of them like that. Yeah. Like, because after like, we talked about it the first time, the floodgates opened on that. But yeah. even just any of those black goose stories, it sounds very much like what this guy, what this creature was describing. Where it is like we we go around, we consume, like you know, we we come from a very dark, like the black place, and like we come out and we just feed and we turn into these things until we reach our final form. Where like that might be what it's talking about, and it kind of reached. I think uh, her as as a dog. I think right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it already at a certain point was at a certain level of strength of where it would had at least consumed the dog. So at that point, it might have switched its tactics. But I think, like if we assume that this thing could be the black goo, its main form of attacking is to just drop on something and just in, consume it entirely, or like dive into its mouth and suffocate it. Well, here, here's something interesting, and I'm going to get into something here really weird. Um, we got a few questions, though, from the audience, the people saying things. Mark Beasel said, what did her friend's boyfriend have to say about being thrown around? I asked that. I mean, you know, like what his thoughts were. As far as he understood, he was just he just got bit by an, a, an animal that came out of the woods, and um, he had to get rabies shots. Yeah, I think, like, to all of them, yeah, assume was, like, was it was a wolf, a, right? It was just like a wolf, yeah. I mean, to the cops, it was a coyote, but it's always a coyote. Yeah, they're not black. Yeah, Betsy, yeah, the thing, the guy saw the thing turn into a hiker. That's some weird stuff. You know, A lot of lot of interesting things in the in the chat. Y'all see any things? And also, like once again, this is on the basis of assumption that we can even believe this thing. Yeah, GV Lozenge, the important playlist, whatever that is. This is think different species for Bigfoot. S A B. What does that mean? What is uh, mm -hmm. what is Sabe? I don't know. Dogman and others, different abilities. I don't think all taller entities are nefs. Nephilim, I guess he's saying. Well, I mean, it's one of the, like, the staples of evil is that they don't really like each other. So, I mean, I doubt there's very many. Yeah, Mikey says if it's a beings. demon... It and told her its name, and it did give her a name. I think what you're looking at is like... Yeah, Marquetta says, who lived there before? Yeah. I think you're looking at a group of like apex 
predators who are just attacking each other. Where, like, yeah, they'll go after prey, but, like, at the same time, they'll, they'll go after each other just as much because in their world or in their environment, they are the apex. Yeah. A lot of weird stuff. Yeah, actually, Hunter, it kind of does remind me of Venom too. Yeah, and there was some some things that that okay. So let's let's go back. Y'all remember the um, the story that we told from Gerald? Like, well, you know, there wasn't just a story; it was a whole thing of information that was given to us by Joel and Gerald, who were into that that cult. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was uh, one of them was into vampirism. The other one was into to lycanthropy. Um, when you when you take take their uh, accounts, okay. One of the things that was said to us about you know is, this is Joel. He was talking about these different. He had more of a grasp on what was going on with these beings, and he said that dogmen, from what he understood. There was a race of beings, and I was, according to him, I was correct about that, that they, he doesn't, he didn't know a lot beyond that. He didn't really know what they were, but he knew that they were not like them. Um, And as far as he knew, they just were there, but they were like a race of beings that lived within the earth, and they did have a physical presence, um, and that they were like bioengineered from like millennia ago from some other, you know, whatever. And he didn't know 100% if there had been any sort of genetic tampering as of late or crossing over, but he said more than likely, yeah. Because what, what you know, he was telling me was that, you know, it seemed like obviously there was something going on because some of the, of the people from not just his coven, but the neighboring covens had encountered these wolves that they, they could get a bead on someone who was one of them. Mm-hmm. but that they were encountering things that were not responding to them. They could not mind speak with them. They could not whatever. But then he described another being, and this is very important. Oh, and then we need to probably talk about what Carlos explained to us, which we haven't done his uh, stuff yet. Carlos is missing part of a jaw, so that makes it a little more difficult for him to talk. So he has to type everything out, and I have to read it, and then whatever but he, he has a sister and a caretaker that can both help him communicate but um we are not done getting his information it is a massive download of information i mean this one is was yeah. a massive download yeah and so so when you what what yeah we're yes tgc yeah we're talking about gerald and joel one of the things you have to understand something okay this is all conjecture on our part anyway. I mean, like yeah. if anybody tries to say, well, these people think they got all the answers, we don't because all we know is what we're putting it together. But I was told by Carlos, and then through Carlos, I met Eve. Now, Eve is a new player in this, and I've only corresponded with her one time, but it seemed very interesting and very promising because she was a high-ranking uh, person in another coven. And then we have another guy that came forward. Uh, not, I know you saw the email, Anthony, um, who was talking about his family was in this. Mm-hmm. They were involved in this. And he said, this is absolutely real. But he's from, uh, what did he say? He was from the east. He was from somewhere else. He wasn't from the south. He was from somewhere, oh, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. He was from Pennsylvania. But he said that his family, and he... That's why we need to get Kurt Reed on to talk about the vampire hunter because his family, one of them was turned and they used to hunt these things. And one of them became a turncoat mm. and joined them and then destroyed part of his his uh, lineage, which was a horrible thing. But they, they worked uh, for the Orthodox Church. Which was very interesting, and I'm sitting there going like, "Wow!" And so you, and so people are sending me all this information, and then we get threatened with some <laughs> other bullshit. Stop threatening me because I don't give a damn what you have to say. Okay, I don't care about your werewolfism and your vampires and your and your Bigfoot and your ghosts and all your bullshit. I don't care. 
You're not going to hurt me no more than the people that are trolling me. Okay? You're not going to do... Okay, so knock it off. You're not scaring me, and it's not going to make me run away. I, I, don't, I don't care. The, you know, save it. If you're going to do it, do it. Stop talking about it. What are you waiting on? Okay? You're not going to make me go, oh, I better rethink my life decisions because of some bullshit I got on an email. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I better trade him to my life. Someone wrote me a strongly worded letter. And don't be sitting outside my house either. <laughs> Somebody did that the other day. I saw them sitting in an SUV. So I walk out there and they drive off. Eh, it could have been nothing. I mean, but then again, never know. when you walk out with a machine gun in your underwear, eh, people tend to go a little weird and get weird. Then the cops come and they're like, and you're like, go away. I'm not buying Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> We're the police. Do you have a warrant? No. Fuck off. <laughs> Excuse my language. Sorry about that. It's just standard uh, American procedure there. So I'm just like, go away. <laughs> um, just kidding. I didn't walk out with a, with a machine gun. I just walked out with my underwear. But uh, so anyways, what, what ends up happening is that with this, these people, they send you this, this information. And so you kind of, I have to, I've been the last week or two and, you know, and the boys can attest to this. I've been trying to piece it all together and uh, you know, and I can tell you this right now. Uh, one of the people that I was talking to, actually two of them have been in this chat. I've seen them. So here's what I'm going to tell you. The information that I've been given, and I've been privy to, whatever, is, I mean, they could be telling other people this too. And it's not like they, I, there's no, I have no, like, I have not cornered the market on this. I can't buy it and tell them, hey, I'll give you this money. Give it to me. Don't give it to anybody else. Nor would I want to. I want the information to get out there. That's why I'm repeating it. Yeah, we can't copyright your stories. And like I've said before, though, I am not a therapist. I'm not going to listen to your story and then tell you, man, I'm just here to help you, you know, uh, whatever. Because if that was the case, I would just listen to your story and then tell you, well, sounds good. And then I would never go and repeat it or try to put you in front of the audience to repeat it. So does that sound like a therapist? Somebody that, you know, that, does that sound like somebody who's trying to help you? Trying to help you to a degree, but they want to get something out of it. I mean, that literally breaks There's an patient. exchange of information here. What were you saying? I was going to say that literally breaks patient. Yeah, um, it, yeah because, because these people are pretending like they're trying to help you. You know, they're getting something out of it, too. So it is an, an even exchange of information. Yeah, D, Neil, yeah, you're right. And... Us too. We've had a couple people. With, mm. Thank you, Sophie. It's a, thank you for that donation. Um, when you look at the what we were told, though, by Carlos, this was interesting. Okay, and Carlos, I know you're in the chat. Um, <clears throat> but what was what was told to me by him? The story of the vampire of Belarus. You remember how the guy threw the silver necklace into its mouth and it just kind of fell out the neck because mm -hmm. the silver was so poisonous? Okay, and now, Anthony, we've talked about this, and Tony, you too. We were told that they actually are given a – what is it? They put it in their ear, right? Yeah. They put it in their ear. I don't, I don't think they specified which ear. I don't think they – but they put it in their ear and it's like a, a drop of something. What ends up happening is these creatures, their blood is full of a parasite that you will only see if it was under a microscope. And they look like little wiggly worms. That, to me, ties into this story, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to bring it home to you to listen to what I'm going to say, but I'm not going to go a step further until somebody does me a solid and you give me money now, or you will not get one more word out of me. No, he's okay, serious. Right, I'm kidding. I, 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 I'm too far along. Hurry up and buy. <laughs> you hurry up and buy. <laughs> hurry up and buy. We don't want no trouble. We don't want no trouble. You hurry up and buy. I feel sorry for your mother. You buy. <laughs> Do we have a problem? <laughs> <laughs> you come. You buy. You go. <laughs> uh, just kidding, folks. Yeah, I was gonna say. 
like <laughs> what Shade Viking says. That kind of sounds like. Well, no, no, we're just joking. We're messing around because because you know this is going to give our enemies a sound bite. Yeah. We just hear him say it. He's not going to talk unless you pay him. Yeah. Just but, uh, kidding, folks. We don't care. The information is the information. What was that? Go ahead, Tony. I was going to say, I don't know if you read Shade Viking's comment, but there's a, a show called The Strain where they have kind of like these parasit uh, worm like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like okay. That. So, so that, that, because, you know, Hollywood, they imitate. Yeah. You know? Now, okay. Now, folks, I've, I'm th this, I, I've, I've met this guy years ago, the cable access, and then Anthony, I introduced Anthony to him years ago at this restaurant. His name is Alex Jones. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've <laughs> known Alex for a long time. We're not friend. We're not buddies. I wouldn't even say we're really friends. We don't know each other that well um, because I, I knew him pretty well, like way back in the '90s, and I'm talking like early mid '90s, whatever. Um, I knew him. All right, we, we weren't friends, um, just acquaintances. Okay, so please don't start, you know, whatever, and freaking out, whatever. But Alex uh, was on Joe one day, on Joe Rogan's show, and I caught a, cl a clip somebody sent me. I don't watch it. Um, if I have a little bit of time, I might watch a little bit. But what he was saying on there, though, was spot on, what, what Alex was saying. And I never thought Alex would come around and, and really you know, agree with me. And Roger, my friend, Roger's the one that, Pat, that took his own life in 2011, he had PTSD um, from a lot of things. And so... But Alex was talking about these vampires that kind of like run our world. And he's not wrong about that. He may be wrong about a lot of things, but he's not wrong about that. And Rogan was sitting there going like, wow, dude, like, are you serious? And it's like, yes, we're serious. This is what's going on. But the further down the rabbit hole you go, you start to learn about the how and the why. And then the haters come out because it's almost like they're, they're infected with some sort of parasite themselves. And according to what Carlos said, he goes, they are, they really are. Yeah. There is a parasite that what they do is they put it in their ear and what these vamps do vamps. I'm going to use that term. That's what James Bartley calls them. Hmm. Um, you know, he so boldly just came out and said something the other day on his page. It just blew my mind. I love James Bartley. James is great. Go look him up. That guy's got a ton of information about wealth these things. Wealth of knowledge. He has got a wealth of knowledge. Um, he lives in Australia. He's an Asian guy, but he's like really spot on. Go if you if you look at him, he's guy with glasses. Um, if you go to his page, you'll see who I'm talking about. If it's that James Barley, he's like an Asian dude. Um, so he's very very intelligent. This guy. But he, he was spot on about these vamps, dude. Like, we, we, you know, that's what he calls them. And that's what they are. And what they do, though, in, in this particular cult or whatever, they stick this in their ear and they tell them, oh, that is to make you to be able to, they get, it gives you some sort of ability to uh, deceive people better, to be able to talk to people and, and you can uh, manipulate them into being a victim, basically. Mm -hmm. Right? And so he says, but that, that's not true. He's like, what they do is that's that parasite. And then after they stick that thing in you, you are overcome with bloodlust. You, you need it. You crave it. And the parasite will, will eventually eat you and destroy you if you don't feed it. So you, you're looking for blood not only to sustain yourself, but the blood is for the parasite. So these worms, they get real big. They grow. And they get big, and, and eventually they'll be so uh, infested in your blood, you'll be so you're, you're ravenous, right? And eventually your hair will fall out, and you'll become more of a beast-looking thing. He said it takes like decades, but these older vampires, they look like Nosferatu. Like I kid you not, man. And they lose all sense of humanity, and they go and they'll live out in the woods or in caves. That's why people actually have encounters with vampire-looking entities. When my book comes out, I'm going to tell you. There are encounters with these things out in the woods. There was somebody who said in the LBL, they told me that they saw a vampire. I don't know if uh, Barton's still in the chat, might be gone or whatever, but Barton, if you are, we talked about this. A vampire encounter, I believe it was you and I that were talking about it. And you can make, or maybe it was, I, th I think it was you heard it from Mark Maycheck, and then I confirmed that somebody had told me this. There was another one that was uh, a vampire encounter that happened in uh, the, the Pine Barrens. I had two of them from there. One of them from the, Benning what is it, Bennington Triangle? Is it called the Bennington Triangle? Um, I 
I can't remember the name of it, dude. It's like a, but th- th- there's like several vampire encounters that come out of there. These things, what they do is they, they, they become monsters, right? They eventually just lose all of their humanity. So they become overwhelmed with this parasite, which is this, which is a hive minded parasite. And that to me is the, that solves the riddle because Carlos told me this is something that Joel didn't tell me. Um, and Joel, I think Joel didn't tell me this because we did, we didn't get to finish talking, but he said there was a lot more he wanted to tell me. And so when I had messaged him about the parasite thing, cause he had said there was a parasite deal he wanted to talk about, you know, and it had something to do with something recently, which is why I can't talk about it on YouTube, but I will talk about it on rumble on a Saturday. So be ready because I'm, I keep telling you, prepare you to go to Rumble because I'm going to tell you some things that I cannot say on YouTube, but I will blow your mind with this information, I'm telling you. So what ends up happening is that these beings, they communicate through this parasite. Now, Carlos filled in the blanks for me, and Joel says, yeah, ask him. That guy can tell you. He's the same. Uh, audacious Amber. Uh, uh. So here's the thing. This being this thing, whatever it is, is is like a hydra. It's like a you know, and it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, Danielle says, "What's your name on Rumble Wolf? My my p- p- personal name? I built an account the other day. I don't even know what the hell it was. I had to call it like. I mean, you could just find us on the Paranormal Roundtable. The 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 name and the logo on Rumble is it is the same as it is you're on about, YouTube. You're about the Paranormal Roundtable or no. my particular name? Mine is like oh, I don't know. Josh P R T Turner or yeah. some crazy." But uh, Matty just posted the link to our Rumble account if you want to click on there and check it out. And all it is is, like, we have, like, I think 70 of our Yeah, I'm in the process episodes. of uploading all the all the backlogged episodes. Uh, we're only at, like, 70 episodes right now because it takes forever. You have to do them one by one. But, we're going to start yeah. going live on there on Saturdays. Yeah. I'm going to do a test run this coming week, a live, like, probably during the day or maybe on Tuesday. So mm-hmm. be prepared for that and... and, and you know, be looking. So go and join Rumble so you can be part of what's of, of Paranormal Roundtable on Rumble. Because, like, you know, Perry, the roofie guy, he says, We're running. We're running away because we're going to Rumble because, you know, we're just, we're not dumb Aggies. Like, hmm. you know, we're not dumb Aggies, you know, whatever, you freaking idiot. It's good. They just got to call it something else because what we're, what we're doing is expanding. They can't, they hate it. They can't stand it. Um, but they're trying to keep you from learning and trying to get, keep you from having this information. And I don't run from anybody. I don't give a damn. Okay. You're not scaring me. Shut up. So the bottom line is this. We're going to talk about some things we can't talk about here. And it's going to be a continuation. Okay. One of the things you got to got to tell you tonight before we go. Carlos said that these things basically, they, you're, they become who you are. They become your blood. So... You can destroy them with, get this, anti-parasite. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you can take something. Yeah. And one of the things you can take is colloidal silver. And, of course, he said with obvious for obvious reasons. And he said that the, the one of the things he did was a silver, uh, like if you were to just drink it and you're a vamp like mm-hmm. them, he's like, these these. it's not the silver that, that, that hurts you. It's the parasites. Yeah. Because they're trying to keep from being killed. So they will literally immediately eat through your flesh. And when they do, it sizzles and pops like peroxide. Dude. It's gross. And he said that these uh, that silver will kill these things and they'll explode in your bloodstream and they'll kill you. So whenever that dude put that silver into that vamp's mouth, and that's what I'm assuming it was, and it, not just vampires, but other types of, of creatures. Gold and silver is a is a the cure, and so when when that thing get got put into its mouth and it fell out the, the 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 this part of its you know whatever under its jaw. That was the uh, parasites that did that. They're immediately just eating through its flesh, trying to get out because of the yeah. silver. So that is what that is. And it's a question that I posed before. And Anthony, you remember we talked about this. I said, what if that parasite, this is before Joel had even said that, and Carlos confirmed that. I said, what if that's what that is? And didn't I say that? Yeah. I did say, I'm not trying to get credit for it. I'm just saying that, like, I was, we were on the right path already. 
But these guys confirmed that that's what that was. And they, they, they you know, what was told to me by Gerald was he even saw another one of these werewolf type creatures, his chest exploded and these giant worms came out of it. And so they, they, not only are they, it's, it's a spiritual binding of, of a demonic entity, but then they put some sort of stuff in your ear and it goes into your bloodstream. And then it's like, it's crazy, dude. Like what they do, it's like, uh, it's like they pollute you mind, body, and soul. Yeah. They, they like imprison you on all fronts mm -hmm. and you're bound. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, but, but the one thing that they did, they, they did say that Christ delivers them, you know, now what ended up happening? Let's, let's do the conclusion here to Cheryl's story. The night that that thing kicked in the pantry and broke all the, and all that stuff. She's like, I went downstairs and she's like, and for the first time I screamed out, I was like, in the name of Jesus, she's like, stop and go away. And she said, I go back inside and I hear and she goes, I walk out and one of the windows to our den had been shattered. And I said, are you serious? And she says, yeah. I said, uh, it left <laughs> and went out through that window. And she said that after that, there was nothing else that happened. I said, and I asked her this question and this isn't a knock on you or anything, Cheryl. And I know you're not listening, but you'll, you know, but just for the, for the audience, you know, why did it take you so long to say it out loud? You know, and I'm asking a question that I already kind of know the answer to. And I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you why. Because they make you afraid. Because when you say that, it's like me and Josh and Nokia, we had a long talk one day. And uh, it was me, him, and Barton and Nelly. We were all in a conversation. And it was right before this, the second conference. And Josh, who was at both conferences, and he's, he's from What Lurks Beneath. He's got a good, good channel, very large channel. He said that when you announce that you're a Christian, he goes, you're raising a flag, basically saying, hey, I'm declaring my color. I'm on this team. This is who I am. This is what I am. And the enemy's like, okay, there you are. So what happens in essence to these people, they don't want to say it out loud. It's like they don't want to commit to do the right thing, even though they know it's the right thing, because immediately you know the enemy's going to go, oh, okay, you're on that team, and they're going to come after you. So many times in this, not just in this community, but in life and in reality of that we live in, it's evil at times and it's overwhelming and people are scared and they're afraid to declare their support for something or someone that is in the right, that is good because they know that they're going to get attacked or they feel like, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. I already got so much going on. I'm paying my mortgage. I'm doing, I'm dealing with with taxes and um, or maybe you're paying child support or maybe you're paying an alimony. I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going through a horrible time and then you're like, and all I need now is to be attacked by some lunatic because I support an idea or a person or a group or something. But let me tell you something. If you're not supporting the one true God, the father of Christ, if you're not supporting his son, Jesus, telling you right now you're not on the right path now it doesn't mean that you're going to burn in hell because i don't think everybody does that's not my belief personal but you're not going to get to the father we're not going to get to heaven unless you go through christ he says that um and i'm not sitting here trying to preach and proselytize i'm not proselytizing i'm just being very honest i'm being completely sincere with what i know to be the truth and to be the reality 86. I know. Believe me. I didn't, I don't have to pay it, but my brother has been in child support hell for years, even though Zane lived with us mm -hmm. since he was 14. My brother still got raped in child support for years and was paying for that. And they would not fix it because they don't care. They just want your money. So believe me, all the people out there that are paying I and mean, it's not correct. I know. Now, some, some people are deadbeats and they're supposed to be paying and they're not. And I understand that too. We're not going to get into that. The system is completely broken. It's just geared to, to hurt people like us. That's all it is. And I'm one of you folks. I pay taxes. I just pay my taxes. I just, I have to do everything you do. I, I put my pants on one leg at a time. Actually, I'm lying. I put on shorts and I just jump into them. And I'm like, and then I gallop on my horse from my bedroom 
into the den. Well, he actually has me and Tony hold yes. one end of his uh, pants, and then he'll run from the other opposite end of the room and just like jump and into them. Jump into them. And, and then they put my gold on me, and then I go to my, I ride my horse to my car. He, he doesn't ever get it on the first try. He always falls, and and then we have to help him back up, and then and he resets all the way at the back of the room, and me and Tony are just standing there waiting for him to finally jump into his pants or his shorts. Yeah, and I understand it because, like— and Amy I, Creel, I get what you're saying, too. I, I Believe me, I have a, a cousin who has two kids, and the dude just took off and hadn't paid a dime. So believe me, I know there's deadbeats on both sides of it. The system is not correct, believe me. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, it's fine. You forgot already? No, you just kind of interrupted it. <laughs> yeah, I interrupted it good. I think you just forgot. It was probably not something important anyway. Uh, Scientology can help the tax situation? Geez, should we sign up for that? <sighs> yeah. So, I don't know. If it can help, it can help. Amy's hold my trousers, boys. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but we got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot to, to come in the future. We're not done, and we're going to keep pushing, and we're going to keep getting information, and I'm going to keep relaying it because that's my job is to spit out information and, and retell the encounters or get somebody on here to tell the encounters or whatever we got to do. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a guy that's going to come on. He's going to talk about what he saw. He saw reptilians kill someone. And uh, oh, I forgot I'm a reptilian. What am I doing? Why would I be up here? <laughs> So apparently I am a werewolf, vampire, reptilian, alien, something. Uh, you know, it, keep, it keeps growing depending on these idiots and what they want to. Should uh, drink colloidal, so, have like a little vial of colloidal silver on camera. And, and just, just show up? Yeah, show yeah them just show them. Like, well, then they'll say that I showed the. the, the oh, yeah, but it's the, actually water. Yeah, or something. it's not real. Yeah. They'll no, find some way to. You know what I just thought of? Like a, the, the perfect uh, anti-vampire weapon would, would be like a, a paintball gun with little paintballs full of, full of colloidal silver. <laughs> Just aim for the mouth the whole time. Well, colloidal silver is made of silver, and it's not cheap. So yeah. a bottle of it's like $60 for like a little bottle. Like, Yeah, but it'll save your life. It could save your life. Yeah. Like on yeah, the yeah. Office, Corey Feldman. It could save your life. I told you, I'm not into horror comics. <laughs> so here's the thing, folks. We're going to keep bringing you the information. I, I do believe that these creatures exist, werewolves, vampires, reptilians, and I know I've said this before. I believe in ghosts, and I believe in aliens. I don't know what aliens are. It could be interdimensional beings. I don't know where they could come from, you know, the planet B612. I have no clue. I'm just trying. I have clues, but I have no firm idea. But every time I say something, people want to key in on it and say, Josh Turner, shit. Yeah. Have you ever thought maybe you're demon-possessed, dude, and that's why y'all do what you do, and you have no clue that the, that the parasites are controlling you? I mean, just a thought. Because you are, you have Josh Turner derangement syndrome. JTDS. <laughs> and I didn't even come up with that. Somebody was on my page and they're Let's like... call it Turner Derangement they have, they have Turner Derangement... Well, that's, T, that's that's the other guy. But they, 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 they compare me to him now, the people that don't like me. So, yeah. And they also call me Jerry Jones and it's, you know, Jerry's World and Jim Jones, the cult leader. And they call me Alex Jones. And all the Joneses. And then they call me the, the other guy, the orange man, bad guy. And they're just like, this guy is like a dictator. He's a horrible guy. He's the Hitler. He's, you know, your, your punk asses are just mad because you can't think of stuff on your own. You can't freaking figure stuff out. Okay? Instead of sitting around thinking of ways to scam and grift people, why don't you do some actual research? I mean, that could be refreshing, right? I mean, wouldn't y'all think? Mm-hmm. I mean, do some real research and let's get on. James Leto, thank you, James, for that. Long time listener. there. I mean, that that's a novel idea. Has anybody ever stopped to think maybe you're just stupid and you don't know you know how to do stuff? Because some of these people, I, I, they, they, their channels are terrible. I think it's like, because like we're, we're all imbued with like with the divine spark of creation. Like we have the ability to create. And like the less people do that, the the it's like the further they stray from being from being human, from being from being what it means to be human, and they instead of creating, they just destroy. And it's like the destruction is like a form of in their mind, in their warped mind is like a form of creation. It, it's just so backwards, it, you know. Uh, it's like if 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 you were really a, a person worth your salt. You would be creating something like you don't even have to be good at creating. Just the the, the expression of creation, the the uh, the desire 
to express that divine spark of creation is is like is a good thing. I, even if you're creating something and you're and you're terrible at it, you know it, it, that's at least better than not creating at all and just looking for things to destroy that other people create. You know. So. Foxtail says, I think there are layers to our world and dimensions and everything is related. We just don't have the perception to understand everything, mm -hmm. but we have the internet, so we're connecting the dots. No, exactly. It's a simple thing. And people are able to send me emails and me and Tony and, and Anthony. Well, Tony takes emails and throws them into the abyss because no. I think he's secretly trying to sabotage and destroy us. I'm not secretly. I'm you have been doing this, my friend. Do I? I'm not secretly. I'm pretty open about it. Well, no, that's not even true because he's not even aware that he's doing it. <laughs> so, but just like that, hey, twi plot twist. It's like Sideshow Bob. Oh, what is this, man? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, oh, what about this? Oh, it's junk mail. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got a plot twist here. Tony is actually the one who's like doing it correctly, and Anthony is like going through and doing it after you to make you look like you're the bad guy. I mean, I doubt it. I mean, I am that smart. <laughs> I mean, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> that's giving too much credence to both of us. Like, too much credence that we both care. Oh, my that's... God. I don't think it's giving too much credit to me. I mean, I, I am that smart. <laughs> well, but, but I'm not that devious. So I wouldn't use my big brain to do something so underhanded to you. Okay. Good for you. It is good for me because I'm good. Unlike you. Yeah, I'm pretty open about that. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like you, you do all your evil stuff in the shadows. He does his dark beating. No, I don't you pretend to be some holy man. I don't do it at all. I am just willfully a sinner, which oh I know I am. No, you you, you, you do it in the about. shadows and in the light. You you just can't help yourself. Well, see, he just admitted like God. He's like knows a wild God. animal. See, you're being a pious turd. He's you're just, being a pious turd. He admits <laughs> that he's a sinner, and he's, he's but you haven't, you haven't, you didn't say you were sorry about it, though. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry about he's not it. Sorry I mean, God nothing. knows I'm sorry about it. But I think if you run like from your sins wrong. and deny it like Anthony does, then he's going to look <laughs> down upon that. I think you have to be open and honest. I think that's the most important thing. And all, and then, and as I you know, I do things. I just don't do the things that you do. That's my favorite thing is. <laughs> I do things. I'm important. Yeah. I'm bad too. I'm bad. I'm I, bad. I can do bad. things. Why you don't choose me? It should be me. I'm the older one. I'm evil. You can lie to the world. I mean, you can't lie to yourself. I fight people. I just took a kid's candy the other day. Mom was crying and everything. That's exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, I had a piece of gum. This, I, I, I took it out of my mouth. I threw it at an old lady. Got caught in the head. Didn't even all addicts, which is what I think you are towards evil deeds. Uh, is that you have to accept that you are an addict. Uh, <laughs> you kind of, yeah, like, like, what is it? The evil where they sit around? They do like the evil like, interventions. Yes, my name is Wolf and. Uh, I'm, I'm a dickhead on YouTube. That's what I do. Um, I mean, I'm correct about everything I, I say. I'm looking around for validation. They're like, I just, I hope I'm amongst friends that I can, can take advantage of and be mean to. <laughs> you know, the, 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 bottom, the bottom line is this. We all are sinners. There's nobody here that's perfect, but I don't get on here and say a bunch of prayers and try to quote a bunch of scripture or whatever. Look, I have a friend who's a preacher, and one of the things he told me, he challenged me to do this. And he said years ago, he, when we were doing the show, he goes, say the, the, the Bible verse. Don't keep repeating the, the go look, because they'll go look and they'll find that one thing. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you reference it, he goes, they'll look and they'll have to find and they'll find more. So if you're out there and you're a YouTuber or whatever— if you want to make an exact point, then yes, point out the exact scripture. But if you really want people to open the Bible and read it and look at it, then just throw it out there and say it's in the Bible and let them go find it. <laughs> I think That's what Cactus also... Pryor did with the, with the whole the, the therm, like, Thermos Trocka yeah, Mortimer. Rock Mortimer like, yeah. like, it, it didn't even mean anything, but he, he just said, oh, it's in the Bible, go look it up. And the intention was to just make people go open look the Bible. Bible. Yeah. You just gave away my trade secret. I was like, oh. I was trying to say that someone <laughs> else had told me this, and he did. I want now. I'm gonna have to go ask him if he got it from Thermos Rock and Mortimer. <laughs> Dan, did you get that? Because <laughs> I'm wondering now if you maybe I thought it was you. I thought your big brain came up with that, but you know, two different people come up with the same idea. 
and then both be like, hey, I came up with this, and they could both be right. But I've said that before, that it is to open your Bible, because people that have Scripture memorized and just throw it out there at, on a whim, a lot of times, I'm going to be real honest, not always, but... I mean, let's be s sincere here. I mean, a lot of times they're doing, and I know one YouTuber, mm, dude, he's got like, I, I've, I figured him out. He's got six scriptures memorized mm -hmm. and that's it. And he uses those. And that's it. He always uses those same ones. I, I've seen you. I'm not going to even say your name because I'm not going to give y'all oxygen, but that's what you do. And I know who you are. I know what y'all are. I know you by your works. And I'm not passing judgment. No, it's not my job to judge you. The Father will judge you when it is time, like he'll judge me. And I'm not over here rooting for this day of this great and terrible day because it's going to be bad for all of us. Some of us will be accepted and some of us won't. And some of us, believe it or not, if you believe in the old scriptures, there is a jail in heaven. I'm not joking. Um, I talked to Rabbi John about that a little bit. And it's it's one of those things where it is the truth. I mean, like th there is, you're not going to get away. There is no escaping what you have done. You will pay in one way or another. And I'm included in that. And I hope and I pray for those that, that are sinners, that they'll change and turn away. And I forgive people, even the ones that are doing what they're doing to us now. The part that I'm having a real hard time with, and I was talking to my buddy the other day about this, and he's into the scripture. And I told him, I said, I'm having a hard time with the ones who have attacked uh, Anthony, Tony, and Nelly. That's something, and, and, that, and one of them has also said things about my brother. And you have gone and you have tried to, you tried to get more information so you could try to hurt them. And uh, yeah, so keep it up. Keep up your, your stuff or whatever, but your day will come. And you're going to be needing to check your mailbox um, because that's all we're going to say about that. And so then this, that will, this will end that. Okay. What we have done this last week, uh, cost us a lot of money and it cost us part of our camera fund and what we were supposed to be doing with that and our computer fund, but that's fine, but you're not going to get away with it. You won't win in the end. Okay. So have your fun, have your time. We're still here. We're still looking for the truth and we're still interviewing people and we're still doing what we got to do. We're and still I'm not, sitting here with 570 in our chat yeah. almost every week. Mm -hmm. so. And I'm not sitting here trying to be a preacher and I'm not pretending to be, and I'm not trying to pretend like I'm a therapist. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to help you. No, I'm here to get your story and then retell it. And hopefully that will help people. If it doesn't, then it's entertainment. And I admit to that. Okay. I'm just, I'm an on, I'm being honest, as brutally honest as you can be. I mean, you know, no. I don't know what these people are looking for, what they want or what, you know, but uh, I really don't care. You know, it's just, it's whatever. Folks, you know who you are. There are about 14, 15 people that watch this religiously and they wait to see if I'm saying something about them. And you're not going to get it. And if I do, it's, you're not going to know. I'm not going to say your name because that's what you want. You want your name said. So keep trying, go somewhere else. One of them recently started attacking a couple other people. Um, that are pretty popular, that have a show, whatever. I was just told that a couple days ago. Um, but they can handle their own. They can deal with them, you know. I, mean, I just ignore the guy. It's just so irrelevant. If everyone else is so wrong and all these other people are so right, that then they must have, like, a lot of information. So, like, they should write books. You know, you know it's like, why, 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 why are you not spending your energy writing books if you know, know all this stuff that apparently no one else does and everyone else is stupid? And you're so, okay. So write a book. Go write a book. And and I'm sure it'll be a great hit. And I'm sure people will just love it if if they view you intellectually the way you view yourself. And we'll see if it sticks. Just Put your money where your mouth is. I mean, I mean, just do huh? something. Yeah, yeah, do something besides yeah. hanging around on us all the damn time. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on now. It makes you, it's making you look real bad because people are, even your own camp is starting to go like, hey, man, you know. That's why they were coming to us saying things because they were like, dude, this, these people are losing their freaking minds. Um, you think they ever had it? I don't think they ever had it. I mean, they, they, they ain't losing nothing. They never, they never had it. And they, and no matter how many truces or how many apologies or whatever they say, they will always break them. They, they can't keep their word for nothing, for nothing. So, exactly. Dennis says he just Tony just threw out the ultimate <laughs> internet challenge. Do something. Go lift weights. See, look at that. Don't you want to lift weights? Why, why would you want to look the way y'all do, though? 
Have you noticed? Like they're all out yeah, of shape. Yeah, a lot of men's problems would they just look like terrible. Like they have low T or something, dude. I think a lot of men's problems w would like either go away completely or just be a lot easier to take if they would just get themselves under a barbell. Like do some squats, do some deadlifts, do some bench, something, figure something out. Go, go find something heavy and pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put and just keep repeating that. And and you'll be you'll be a better man for it. You'll be a better person. Just do something physical to exercise all this negativity because that that's you, you're clearly full of it. So make something positive out of it. You know, and, and, instead, instead of being skinny fat or just sometime. fat. Yeah, Amy says Josh Turner derangement syndrome should be added to the DSM. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true. It's true. Thank you, Miguel, for that. He says uh, another pallet of PRT cookies. Uh, I think we're starting to move forward with the plan for a PRT fighting game like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Let's you guys and all our awesome paratroopers. Um, yeah, and so what we're going to see pretty soon, too, is uh, the, the community is going to come together again. Now, Ken is actually, I think he's still kind of pushing about the conference. Um, we'll see. I, I, I say no. Right now, I don't see it happening because of what has been going on. Um, but we did, we did, our lawyer seems to feel like things are going to be in our favor. So, you know, he did what he did and they'll be getting their, their little information and we'll see how they react. And um, maybe if, maybe that'll stop them and get them to, to knock their shit off. And if that, if that happens, you know, pardon my French, but you know, if they don't, you know, screw off, you know, then maybe we'll to go take it further, you know? Uh, but the ranting and raving and acting a crazy fool is just, it's got to stop at some point, you know? Kez McIntyre says, weightlifting releases dopamine. Don't I know it? And I'm going to do it tonight and I'm going to love it. I did legs last night and it hurt so good. The pain, I love the pain. I'm not a masochist, but I love it because you know that it's just, it's releasing that, that anxiety. And then the cold shower, it sucks when you're doing it. And the breathing is hell when you're doing it, but it, it, it's all for, for the greater good. It's all for the greater good. And thank God I have a wife, a loving wife that, that'll slap me for eating too much. She got onto me last night and she's like, do you really need a, a sandwich? And then another half of a sandwich. Can't you just <laughs> eat one sandwich? And I'm like, I'm over there like, what about you? <laughs> Maybe if you took the bread off, you could eat. Sitting there watching me. <laughs> Kidding. She's right, though. I mean, she's like, she tries to do things like, you don't need that much mayonnaise or mustard or whatever. Not mustard, but, you know, whatever. Something unhealthy. I don't really eat that much mayonnaise, but, like, just anything that's really too much, you know, whatever. Sodium or sugar or whatever. She tries to help keep me from being, you know, ridiculous. So... L Rugal Lori ja Josh is effing massive. I think he just needs to lose a few pounds in the midsection. Gee, Mike, that was a good one, man. You come up with a new name? Wow. I don't know. I don't think they meant that as a insult. Oh, okay, so that's not a troll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just hard to get a feel for people's tone over text. Because they put like a flexing arm. Yeah. No. Uh, Ristal says, good to see you back in the studio. Yeah, we, we've been in the studio the last two nights, and I'm going to start doing that. You taking off? Yeah. All right, be safe, man. Yeah, drive careful. Yeah, Rugal, um, I definitely can stand to lose a few pounds in the midsection. I just have, uh, mostly I have a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, love handles. Yeah. Whatever the reason I have these love handles, man, it is. Uh... Now, Tara, don't block him. Let him, you know, I don't think he was trying to be yeah. snarky. Well, he's no, he's still... not blocked from the chat, I think. Okay. Yeah. 
and even if somebody wants to block me, as long as it, you know, it, you can tell if it's one of the the cockroach people. You know, <laughs> um, you can usually tell the cockroach clan, and there's a few <laughs> others that do what they do. Oh wait, Tara, Tara can't block people. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you can block people to where you can't see them and they can't see you. But like, it, it, I mean, on the deal. Yeah, I mean, like, unless you're a moderator, you can't block people from the live chat. No. Yeah. Um, what's funny though is like these people who were professed enemies are now all friends because of me. They're all like they've <laughs> yeah. joined forces. Like that's gonna make their cause any better. Like you're going to 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 win because we're the rebels from Star Wars. We're all gonna be yeah. all together. Although none of us have any. They have no cohesiveness because they don't believe like each other. Oh, yeah. They don't, none of them believe, like one of them is like a devout aper, uh, two of them are, and then one of them is like a big time, like woo, whatever, and one's just an absolute liar fraud that just makes stuff up from AI. A motley like, crew of mental midgets. Yeah, they're just a bunch of whack jobs, man, and then one of them is just like a fundamentalist wacko Christian, um, and nothing wrong with being a Christian, I'm a Christian, but he's a fundamentalist wacko, but doesn't adhere to his own stuff. Like, you're supposed to do it, but not him. And so they're just, you know, and then another one is just a, a white knighting uh, fraud, um, you know, and they're all just a bunch of weenies that can't do anything, would never say anything to my damn face. You know, they're going to say a bunch of crap. That's what people do, you know, and, and you know you do, and you're hating it. You're hating every minute of 590 people here in the chat, you know, learning stuff. And instead of instead of just shutting up and, and sitting back and learning with them, you're just disrupting everything, you know, trying to. So that that's pretty much where we're at. Um, but we're gonna bring more information to the table. It's gonna happen. Probably look for a live on Tuesday. <clears throat> probably not month, not probably not tomorrow. It could though. And I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, try to do one that's gonna just just be on YouTube and there's going to be one that I'm going to do that we're going to push on Rumble so that we can um, start getting people prepared so that we can go to Rumble and we can talk about some things and make the connection between things that we cannot do here on YouTube. Now, this is their platform. This is their, uh, what is it called? Their, um, what is it? Uh, their terms of service, their TOS. And so, you know, I can't, there's just certain things I can't do. Love it or hate it, that's just the rule. And um, they, they have that control and th I don't have any say in it. So, yeah. So we're going to have to do it, you know, somewhere else. But we will always be here on YouTube and we'll, we'll still have a YouTube thing or whatever. But we're going to start doing some more things on Rumble so that we can talk about some of the hard issues that we can't talk about here. And there is a lot of things to say. Um, and, and as we talk about things, it's going to become a snowball. More and more stuff's going to come out, and there, you're going to start to see more and more information that's going to, you know, and it's going to get leaked out slowly, and then it's going to become a, you know, because every time we do a show, and Anthony, you can attest to this, we always get three, four, five things about whatever it is we talk about. Yeah. Um, so somebody's out there listening. I mean, there's tens of thousands of people out there listening uh, to the to the live stream. Um, and we get a bunch of people that listen to the podcast, which is one reason why I don't want to abandon that platform altogether. It's just, you know, here lately, we just haven't had time to do a bunch of, um, editing. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big issue right there. But as, if we can get what we need from the live stream, people will show up and, and, you know, be willing to help out a little bit here and there. Then that's all we need. We don't, you know, we don't have to have like this massive podcast following, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, the, the, the right people will learn and tell other people about what you learn. Because if you sit back and you're quiet and you're not on the Internet telling people what the hell you're, you're learning or what you're discovering or what you're uncovering, then we're, we're just wasting our time. Um, it's good that you will get this information, but others need to get it because there is a thirst for knowledge right now that is going on. And people are dying of that thirst because they're not being told what needs to be told. So we had fun tonight. We had a good time. We had um, a really amazing encounter that I had to get out there. Think about that, though. What was this being? What was this creature? I say was because she no longer deals with it. But um, it, it was around for a long time in her life. 
going back to from when, when she was a young child, this thing grew alongside her. And it got energy and power from eating things, absorbing energy and becoming something unholy, even more than it already was. So think about that, folks. I mean, what, what we're dealing with here, what, what the werewolf, dog man, you know, skinwalker, whatever this is, this chimera, whatever. It could be that you know, all those different things should be all of the above, or it could just be one thing pretending to be, I don't know. Uh, tulpas too. You know, I thought yeah. about it. I thought about this and I, I talked with a scorpion about this and we were talking about it the other night. And I, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. And I think me and you talked about it too, Anthony. A tulpa. Uh -huh. It could be, you know, Somebody uh, let Lee Tracker E know. She, they said that she's not in the chat, and then she was here earlier. And let, let her know to go back and listen. As I, I'll forget to tell her. But, um, yeah, because that is very, very, very uh, important that people see, you know, this stuff. So a lot of information out there that we need to get out, and it will come out. And it's going to come out. And like I said before, we have the best chat. We have the best people in the chat. I, I, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I put the paratroopers up against anybody else's, a hundred percent. Thank you for uh, everybody that donated. Did we miss anybody? I don't. I think we we told everybody when they donated. Uh, back I up. think we got everyone. Um, Hacking is poetry. Yeah, do something. Go and get some job. <laughs> uh, uh, we Miguel missed Miguel. My thing only goes up to a certain point. I can't go up any further. Yeah, uh, Philip Barnes, uh, thank you for that. He says, my, my contribution to the kombucha fund. James Aletto, she says, great show, Josh. Thank you for that. Joanne Hartnett, thank you for that. Uh, Audacious Amber. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't repeat that super chat, but thank you. Uh, Hunter, 1014, thank you for that. Says, Buster says, hi. Uh, Michelle Delaney, five dollars, and so, yeah, I, I think we got everyone. Okay, so go to patreon.com pr slash prt podcast, become a Patreon member. Did we put the link up there to the PayPal? Yeah. Okay. Because that's important. You can go and you can donate there, and that's that's a great way to help out the show. Thanks, T. Toey, um, for that donation. Also, at the top of the page there, send your stories to Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. I think everybody in the whole field has my, my email by this point. I get a 1,000 of them a day. So, and, and, and the old email still works, too. I still get emails from that email, too. DosWolfMan88 at gmail.com. And for those in the, in the, in the uh, industry or whatever you want to call it, the field, this community, I have a, a, another email that I only give out to other creators and people, but it apparently has gotten around to some listeners, and that's fine, too. If you want to send it through that email, that's fine, too. Um, there's two others, actually. So I have four emails you can send them to. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, you don't. That's fine. And the other thing, too, hit me up on Facebook Messenger. I get a bunch of, info, of stories and everything else from, from my email or from uh, Facebook Messenger. Now, here's the thing. I got to explain this to you before I run here. I have multiple uh, accounts that are connected to Paranormal Roundtable. Um, this is one of my, this is my Facebook account. That's the main one, just so you know what it looks like. There you go. That's for friends, people. And if you're a listener of the show and if you tell me, hey, I listen to the show and um, you're not just some bot or whatever or some some fake hot chick that wants to show me uh, some channel or some crap, or or if you're not one of these fake accounts from one of the filthy eight or whatever they are up to now. Um, and then I have this one. Uh, don't check this one as often. This was the original one we created, and we don't really do much with it, but I noticed it the other day. It's got like 4,300 followers or something like that. I think I need to update that page. Yeah, we need to update it. But I, I, I've been checking it lately. And then I got this one here. This is Josh Wolf Turner from Paranormal Roundtable. And then I have a meta business uh, page, which I had forgotten about. <laughs> I was like, I was in there going, what is that? It keeps popping up. So I go and I look and I was like, 
Oh, there's a PRT business page. So that is another one. So there's this one here. And if you look and see, um, I don't know what I'm grimacing about. But anyway, that's those are my Facebook accounts. If you don't see those, the, and then I have another one that's a pri that's a personal account that just shows me with some bananas in the wall at the wallpaper behind me. I don't use that account. That's just in case I get in trouble and they make me get put in jail or whatever is Facebook jail or whatever, which I haven't in a long time because I don't I don't even call anybody a pupacaga head anymore because <laughs> you can't because they'll jump all over you. Um, and then on Instagram, I'm Josh Turner nine forty. So follow me on Instagram. Uh, yeah. And it looks like the same thing as my profile pic for, for Facebook. Work stuff. Okay, so anyway, there you go. There you have it. That's it. Uh, there you go. Get the rhythm. Get the rhythm. There you F and go. Uh, <laughs> uh, has anybody seen that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Ben Kingsley? Anybody know? I, I still haven't watched that show. Uh, was it called? Something Grace. Um, they only had one season. What was it like it the was Endless Grace or something, something like, like that? Something like that. It was funny, though. Me and Nelly watched it. It was like really good. But anyway. He always does that. He does his little calisthenics. <laughs> it's like funny. Uh, all right. Thank you for everybody donated. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you again. Like I said, be expecting a an impromptu live that's going to come at you on like uh, Monday or Tuesday, and uh, we'll we'll definitely do something Tuesday night, and then uh, I'll be on Thursday with Blondes and Booze at eight o'clock. Uh, we got Chris Garitano as a guest. Uh, they have not had him on the show yet, so that should be good. Go back and check out Blondes and Boosh from last Thursday. What date was that? Would that be? That would go back be... and check it out with Eric Palacios. Eric, he brought the heat. Man. That'll that be dude, the eighteenth. The eighteenth. We did the eighteenth. Man, the guy, he was smoking. Yeah. Man, it was. He he brought the heat, and he talks all about Central Texas and whatever. And you're gonna see some work between me and him coming up pretty soon. Um, we are doing a syndication, so that's gonna that's still happening. Um, and then Friday we'll be back. I think we have a guest on Friday, but I can't remember. I, I kept looking at my calendar and see who it is. And then Saturday we have, uh, I think Friday I might have Kirk. I'm going to see if Kirk's going to come on. I'm not for sure. And then Saturday we got uh, another guest who's going to come on. And I think it's Chris Kramer. He's going to be on with me and, and Chris James and whatever. And then Sunday, we'll be retelling people's encounters. Once again, we have a lot to talk about because I want to get Carlos's story out there. And somewhere along the line, we're going to start dropping the podcast episodes again. Um, and we don't know. We don't have a set date when it's going to drop. Because like uh, whatever that turd said, that, that you know, oh, we just, we just go on at any time of the night and get 400 people because we're trying to flex. No, that's just called being popular. Okay? Which is part of the reason why people hate us. They're jealous. Uh, yeah, he goes on at 2 in the morning and, and drags people. This guy literally said, I drug people out of bed. <laughs> if you were there for that live, which I don't know, this is a different crowd probably, but like a lot of you probably weren't, but you might have went back and watched it. Like, did I drag you out of bed? Like, who does that? Like, hey, 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 the king has declared that he's going live on YouTube. Taketh your ass out of bed. Wash your bleary eyes. Take your peapot. Use it. Dump it. Go and sit at the self in front of thou computer. And listen to the words of the king. Long live King Wolf. <laughs> and I come out and I'm like, yes, uh, there was a guy who was just, uh, well, was just, well it was another guy. Was, uh, there was a time that the prophecy was, was the star. Came. And then it was a corn pop. Oh. Was such a bad dude. And then he went, he went, he went, he went, he went, oh, and then you can't, uh, and then, you know, no birds, just, twin, 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 and there's a cable in my arm, in summary. And then I just passed out, and everybody had to sit there and listen, because if you, if you dare leave, Kim Jong Turner's going to get up and be like, where are you going? Where's up, man? It's not what happened, but, but close, it's similar. 
And then when you come to, you can't find your way off stage, so someone has to guide you to it. Like you're like exit stage. You right. go two or you three different directions left. before you find the right direction to go down the stairs. And you fall up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> then you take a poop. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> They're like, uh, excuse me, Mr. King. Uh, what did we say about keeping in Mr. Dookie? Uh, 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 no, no, hey, Dookie, go out. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey face, raw VG, turtle slime. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's me. All right, folks. Well, let me drag you out of bed. Can't be doing that. All right. Good night. We love you. Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> okay. Before I go, I gotta say, we went to Costco. <laughs> went to Costco. Those people there, they look so unhappy. I, and, and I'm not bashing Costco. The, but it seems like the workers at Sam's are like more happy. I don't know why that is. They're just kind of like, hey, what's up? And they're real friendly. And the people at Costco are just like, <sighs> and, and they're checking the stuff and they're like, oh. And then the poor lady, she dropped a little wand. <laughs> Remember, we had to yeah. open the deal and help her get it out. And she's just like, oh, I just want to go home. And I'm like, you should have got 30 minutes. She's like, looked at me like, really? I think it's because they're so badly understaffed. I was like, okay, I'm sorry I told you that. You have you have a lot less time. <laughs> sorry, but they just look very miserable and unhappy. I mean, and you're walking through and and they're like, Welcome Costco, you know, and it's almost like that Mike Judge, you know, like it's happening. I mean, idiocracy's here. Yeah. Hey, welcome Costco, I love you, you know, whatever. I'm just telling you. All right, guys, I'll see you.